least some of them, most of them, you'll see. And later, Christopher Maloney is going to give us the latest on all the action and drama that takes place in law and order organized crime. But first, let's get to your pop star headlines today. First up, Taylor Swift. Yesterday was the best day for Swifties graduating from NYU. The Grammy winner took to the commencement stage at Yankee Stadium to address the class of 2022 and also accept an honorary doctorate in fine arts. Swift gave the new grad some good advice on embracing the cringy moments in life and following their dreams. We are led by our gut instincts, our intuition, our desires and fears, our scars and our dreams. And you will screw it up sometimes. So will I. And when I do, you will most likely read about it on the internet. Anyway, hard things will happen to us. We will recover. We will learn from it. We will grow more resilient because of it. And as long as we are fortunate enough to be breathing, we will breathe in, breathe through, breathe deep, and breathe out. And I am a doctor now, so I know how breathing works. In, through, deep, and out. All right, well said, Dr. Swift. Thank you for that. And a big congrats going out to the class of 2022 at NYU. Next up, Jennifer Lopez. The first trailer is out for JLo's Netflix documentary. It's titled Halftime. In the movie, the superstar singer takes fans behind the scenes of her 2020 Super Bowl performance and all the work that led up to creating that iconic show. Here's a peek at that. We are on the edge of being able to get this on the field. I can't do it if you guys keep just pressing us. I'm trying to give you something with substance. I want something real. I do this not for an award. No, I do this to connect with people and make them feel things because I want to feel something. Let's go. My whole life. I've been battling to be heard, to be seen, to be taken seriously. Should we do it one more time? Yeah! I really feel like my life is just beginning. Said to her once. Wow, a lot going on there. That documentary is going to also take a look back at Gen Jennifer Lopez's entire career, including the harsh criticism her music and relationships have received back in those early days. Lopez often called a diva and serial bride. All of that's going to be covered. Next, Netflix's show documentary is called Halftime. That's set to start streaming June 14th. All right, next up, Lizzo. Speaking of upcoming documentaries, we want to check out this one. It's called. Well, we'll tell you what it's called later. The About Damn Time singer is getting a feature of her own. This is set to hit HBO Max. It's untitled right now, so we're not going to know what it's called quite yet. But it will follow the Grammy winner's humble beginnings and rise to superstardom by taking a look at her cultural impact and shift that she's caused in the music industry. Lizzo said in a statement about the documentary, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success, and hopefully I can inspire other young creatives to keep going. We don't have a date yet for the documentary yet, but we can expect to see it, as I mentioned, on HBO Max sometime this fall. All right, and finally, Andy Samberg and John Mulaney, the two comedians stepping up to host Jimmy Kimmel Live last night after Kimmel tested positive for COVID for the second time in just a month. Thank you so much. It is an honor and a favor to be here. I, I, guess, I guess we should explain why we're hosting tonight. You remember how Jimmy said he didn't have COVID, but then he said he did have COVID? Well, he was right both times. <laughs> That's right, Jimmy has contracted COVID again for the second time in three weeks. And we're thinking they should probably change the name of the show to Jimmy Kimmel Alive. <laughs> there is pressure. And, and to make this an even bigger pressure situation, we're not only hosting, we're also two of the guests on the show. That's right. <laughs> so, uh... For any of you uh, who don't like what you're seeing right now, buckle up, because it's not going to get any better. <laughs> what a great job those guys did. Don't worry, of course, the, the dynamic duo there did pull it off. And Kibble says he's feeling just fine. At least we know the show is in good hands while we give JK just a little bit longer to sleep. And that is going to do it for now. Still coming up on Popstar Plus, Emmy Rossum is going to explain how she immersed herself in the life of Billboard queen Angeline. That's next. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. NBC News, streaming free now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And welcome back. You may know Emmy Rossum from the show Shameless or her role in the film version of Phantom of the Opera. But more recently, she's directing and also starring in a project all about the elusive Angeline, who is famous for her appearances on billboards all over my hometown of Los Angeles, California. She told us, Emmy did, how she took on the role for the brand new miniseries. I first saw her billboard when I was about 13. I was in LA for the first time auditioning with my mom, like in a Hertz rental car. And I remember looking out the, the car window and just seeing this massive billboard of this woman um, and just being so struck by her image. And so I started asking people, you know, who, who is this woman, Angeline? Because there are billboards everywhere. And everyone had the same response. Everyone lit up with joy and then told a completely different story. And I think that was so fascinating to me is how can you be so known and yet so unknown at the same time? So for me, that was really, this is such a passion project. She has been, you know, somebody that I have admired who I think is is a, a deep and, and thoughtful individual who stands for kind of positivity and pink and whimsy and, kind of the ultimate fantasy. Um, she is living, breathing performance art, and that's why, you know, the opportunity to tell this story is is just a dream come true. Um, damn, Angelina, it's so big. I bet people will talk about this 100 years from now. Oh, oh my god. It's working. Yeah, I got the opportunity to meet her um, after kind of pouring over everything that I could read and buying her meditation tapes and memorizing them. And I met her at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Um, we had a very long dinner there and she chose the place because she said it was her lucky contract signing place. I was of course overprepared and an hour early and she got mobbed on the way in by fans so she ended up to be an hour late even though she arrived on time because she was selling merch out of the trunk of her car. And she sat down and the first thing that she said to me was, so why do you have such a hard on to play me? And that was the exact reason. She is, um, she is strong. She is hyper feminine. She is absolutely um, uncompromising. She's authentic. Um, she is, she's brave. And I poured my heart out. I said, you know, I, this is, I've loved you since I was 13. I know every word of your meditation tapes. And we started to connect on, on a, uh, uh, spirit, spiritual level, talking about philosophers and ways of thinking about life, um, that that meant something to bo both of us. And um, she gave me one piece of advice, which is, you know, you should play what you see. I, I, that's what that's who I am as an icon. I'm something different to everyone, and that that way it'll be your story. And my old boyfriend used to handle all the pictures, but he is out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know where he got them printed, but he was super cheap and I only want the best. So I grabbed the yellow pages, I closed my eyes and I said, find me the best printer in all the land, gods and fairies.
For me, this isn't a character. Angeline has turned her life into living, breathing performance art. Um, and I think what's so fascinating about her is, like she says, she's a mirror, right? So whatever we see in her is what resonates with us. That's what she wants to be. That's what an icon does, right? It serves to touch something personal within us and to be like a beacon of light and strength for us in a way. And I think that she does resonate with so many different people on different levels. You know, for us, this is an investigation of identity, which is such a conversation in society right now, right? Are you just a summation of historical facts about your life, or do you get to define yourself, present yourself and your image to the world and be in control of that? And that's what I think is so kind of phenomenal, that commitment to making the outside reflect how you feel on the inside, that that is the most authentic presentation of who we are. And that I think is, is something that, that serves to inspire. Every situation, even if it seems impossible, can be made possible somehow. That a fierce commitment to the positive, to um, bringing whatever energy into the room that, that you want to um, capture, that that can be inspirational to people. She must have sprinkled some of her positive magic fairy dust on me because the chance of an actor to get to make something after wanting to make it for so long, um, it's really, it is a dream come true. It's a little bit of Angeline magic. It's gonna be wild to see that one. Thanks to Emmy for spending some time with us and you can find Angeline streaming on Peacock. Coming up next, the Cows of Downton Abbey spilling details on the new era for the Crawleys. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Come on. Yeah, it's a great say. workout. It's yeah. everything That's you need. Who comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. me. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. everybody welcome to today future's looking yeah bright. you got a whole restart how does that land with you is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities sounds so good i love it welcome back to pop star plus downton abbey fans you're going to be stoked for this next one seven members of the cast joined us in studio to discuss the new movie downton abbey a new era now that's set in the 20s and also in the south of france not too shabby take a look Welcome to our recreation of the ever so elegant Downton Abbey dining room. And with us now, seven members of the Downton Abbey A New Era cast. It has been more than a decade since Downton first opened its doors and audiences fell in love with the Crawley family and their staff. Well now, six award-winning seasons and a hit movie later, the gang is back together for a big screen sequel this time. 
family secrets send some to the south of France, while the rest are left to tend to some unusual house guests when the crew of a silent movie brings the modern world to Downton's doorstep. Take a look. When you let him kiss you, it feels as if you might. Wait, wait, who's he? Cut, 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 cut. So I'm ever so sorry. We ca I can't work like this. Oh, it's Mosley. He's a great favourite here. Yeah, you don't mind him watching, do you? I'm sure they don't mind him watching. They just don't want him in it. <laughs> well spotted. <laughs> so now you just do it all again? Exactly. Oh, I'd rather earn my living down than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so many good one-liners there from Lady Grantham. Joining us now, Downton cast Michelle Dockery, Laura Carmichael, Alan Leach, Hugh Bonneville, Elizabeth McGovern, Hugh Dancy, a newbie, and Kevin Doyle. Guys, good morning. It's so good to see you. Good morning. First question, which fork do I use? I mean, this is a, you, you guys would know, not me. We're really not sure. So when they came to you and said a second Downton movie, did everybody's hand shoot up? Was anybody nervous about doing it? I mean, we were so happy to get back together. We were happy to get out of the house. <laughs> it was right in the middle of the pandemic, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it didn't take much cajoling. No. no. And, you know, um, half of the movie takes place in the south of France, which is so wonderful. Hugh, it turns out that perhaps there's some scandalous family secrets. <laughs> yes, we're invited to the south of France because uh, Violet, uh, Lady Grantham, has been uh, told that she's inherited a villa. And so we go off to uh, the, uh, the invitation of the current owners to find out why she's inherited this villa. Now, so that meant most of you got to go to the south of France, and some people, Michelle Dockery, had to stay <laughs> home and hold yeah. down the fort. I did. I had to stay at the castle. I was very envious <laughs> of these yeah. guys. Yeah, but she had Hugh. Yeah. I, I was going to say, had Hugh Dancy, which we'll get to that storyline <laughs> in a moment exactly. Could have been worse. Um, talk about just being together during the pandemic, because this was, you know, you, I, I heard you were at this French villa, and it was something like a summer camp, Alan. It was, yeah. I, I mean, we had to quarantine together for about 10 days. So it did turn into like an old folks home, really, where <laughs> we would uh, all go together and go, what's for the, the lunch? Do you know yeah. what's lunch? And we'd shuffle over, have that, and then shuffle back to our, our, our sun loungers. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It, how was it, Laura? It was fantastic. Yes. It didn't feel like work at all. It was yeah. wonderful. Well, meanwhile, Lady Mary, you know how when you guys come, I always like, I just slip into calling you your characters' names. I know <laughs> that you're not really it. them. You're not really the Crawleys. I just want you to know that. You're used to it. I know. Do people do that all the time? They do. Yeah. They do. And we don't mind. You don't. <laughs> No. Do they come up and say um, they're, they're mad about this storyline or that storyline? What's the one you hear yeah. about? Oh, well, forever. It was like, let's make Edith be happy. So yeah. she kind of finally got a happy ending. But that Edith is kind of happy in this movie. Yeah, she's in a great place. I think because they live much further apart. <laughs> yes. Than Mary, that's why they're, yeah. they're much well, happier. I was going to say, Michelle, Lady Mary's love life is a real roller coaster. I'm, for the record, still upset about Matthew dying in season one. Yes. And if you call me and say that's a spoiler alert, that was 10 years ago, okay? <laughs> so you're not a fan if you don't know that. But um, this time her husband's out of town. Yes. There's a handsome newcomer on the scene. Did I yeah. sense some sparks with Hugh Dancy's character? I think he did. Oh. <laughs> what do you say, Hugh? Was it, was it mutual? The, were the sparks mutual? They were mutual. Yeah. I feel like they were going more in my direction <laughs> towards her than the other way around. Well, you're the newie here. You yes. come in into this established cast. It's so beloved. You obviously are no slouch. We know you from many, many previous roles. But what was it like to, to walk into this? Well, they're a very cruel group. Yes, I can see that. You can tell. Uh, no, it was easy. It, they made it very, very easy for me. Uh, and, and Kevin, you really, um, Mr. Mosley kind of has a big role here. And, and um, you, you kind of had been like on the sidelines here, this beloved character. But now you're moving into center stage a little bit in this Yeah, play. yeah. How did that discovering feel? Discovering untapped skills. I know. <laughs> Who knew you had such talent? Yeah, yeah. Neither did I. <laughs> well, it really is all in the family, not just in the show, but Elizabeth, your husband directed this. He did. I know. What, so how did, were you giving him tips? Like, let me give you a Downton 101. No, basically <laughs> he said, just prepare by packing your swimming costume and, and your lilo and <laughs> let's get going. And he thought of a lot of games for us to do and he made everyone happy. Oh, that's so good. I, now so I'm going to keep this going with the all in the family because Laura, yeah. you are married to an actor, Michael C. Fox, yes. who plays one of the servants downstairs. That's right. And you just had a baby. You did. Yeah. <laughs> and so did Lady Edith. Yeah. So maybe you really are just your characters after all. It's happened. <laughs> How's yeah. that going? It's great. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're so happy. He's oh. wonderful. Well, I'm going to take it one step further because Michelle, 
you are a recording star and you are recording music with with Michael C. Ford. Laura's husband, <laughs> who also plays. I mean, I need like a Venn diagram to do this. Tell me about that. I didn't know you were a singer. I think you sang on the show a couple times. But. Yeah, we've we've been writing songwriting together now for the last six years, and um, our EP came out on Friday. Um, it's called The Watching Silence. I mean. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting. Oh, what kind are. of music yeah. is it? Oh, look, there you are, Michelle, Michael and Michelle. It's Americana. Oh. So. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> what was it like, Alan, to slip back into these characters? Is it like putting on, you know, an old pair of jeans or corset? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. it really is. I mean, you know, I've never played a character, and I think a lot of us can say the same for so long. So it is like putting on a comfortable pair of shoes. It takes yeah. a couple of minutes where you're like, how does he sound? What does he do? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. Now, I don't want to give anything away because then people will be outside, like, ready to kill me. But um, <laughs> there's kind of a shocking ending. So, Q, as the, the dean of this group, do you think people are ready for this? Oh, well, you know, it's the circle of life. There is, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you know, chapters, uh, chapters closed and uh, new chapters are written. Does yes. anyone else want to weigh in on that? Do you think the fans are going to handle... Death and destruction. Oh, no, I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's a really emotional story. It time. is. Yeah. There's a lot of laughter as well. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, it actually, yeah. I think, is one of the funniest ones you've seen. I mean, mm. just Carson alone in the south of France. <laughs> it's like good comedic material. Yeah. Thank you so much. The movie's really fun. I think I read somewhere it's like Downton Abbey's like getting in a hot bath at the glass of wine in a good book. <laughs> and I have to say, I agree. So thank you so much for bringing the joy all these years. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank oh, will there be a third? Well, yeah. if the Who knows, fans go to see it. Yes, I did. Okay, there will be. Come back. We'll keep the table set. If we have piqued your interest, then you can enjoy Downton Abbey, A New Era. Premieres only in theaters on Friday. By the way, the film is from Focus Features, we want to mention, part of our parent company, NBC Universal. Still coming up, a fan favorite, Christopher Maloney gives us the scoop on what might be going on between Benson and Stabler. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Popstar Plus and get ready because we're about to dive into the law and order universe. At this week's NBC Universal Upfronts, we caught up with Detective Stabler himself, Chris Maloney, the star of organized crime, and we couldn't help but ask him about where the feelings are between Stabler and Mariska Hargitay's Captain Benson, like where it all stands now. What she and I used to do a, a shtick where, where we go. You're great, kid. We'd clip each other in the, in the chin. Like if we did a great scene, we'd go, hey, good job. So that we were recreating that. Well, I think, and this is just my perspective, I think now uh, it's Olivia who's having more difficulties than staying with. I want to find balance here in this, whatever this is. How about we call it a friendship? How's that for now? 
I was re reintroduced into this universe, having freshly lost my wife and trying to coming back to a, a place and a situation that I hadn't been in. As the feelings build and the reality builds that, oh, we, we, we're in an environment where we can act on these feelings possibly, then, you know, then it's getting all too real. I lost my mother you know, five years ago or so. Yeah, it's been a while, but you know. But I realized that she's, in a way, she's become a bit of a surrogate mother for her. And I didn't realize that I was late to that game. I kind of crept, snuck up on me, crept up on me. She's a pro, so it's kind of effortless to work with her. I look at you, Elliot, and I don't see any light. There's just this. I don't know what to call it. I mean, you don't sleep anymore. You hardly ever home. And when you're home, you're just so unreachable. Yeah. Don't let them do that to you, honey. She's a very interesting actress. So that always, you know, I find that fascinating. Uh, she's always working. She's always, you know, if she doesn't understand something, it's, it's, she can't do it. It's, and it's really fat. You know, she, she doesn't force things. It's, it's interesting to be in that, around that type of person, so confident in what they know and what they don't know. I, I think it shows. What, whatever is happening, I think it shows. You know, I know I feel it every time I'm with her. Stephanie March. I've always wanted to work with, with Dan. I don't know if it was my idea or not, but I can't remember. But I jumped on it. Uh, I knew it would be right. I knew aspects of what it should be and you know what we had to say, and what our relationship was. And uh, for me personally, it was very deep. Well, you see, I'm guessing that uh, your father gave you this medal as a kind of act of contrition for him. Maybe his way of saying, you do better. You honor this cross and all that it's meant to represent. That was a really deep moment. There he is, the one and only Chris Maloney. Thanks, Chris. All right, you can catch that series finales of the three Law & Orders tonight. It's the big night on NBC. And that's going to do it for today's Popstar Plus. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played. The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post, and each week I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. 
I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, what's buzzing on social media. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. All about those products we've seen on social media and wondered whether to add to cart. Well, we rounded out our favorite trending items from lip gloss, yes, it's making a comeback, to flared leggings, also popular again. And remember, see that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Watermelon has been a mega trend when it comes to beauty products, and we have seen all things watermelon taking social media by storm. Now, watermelon sleeping masks are at the top of the social media heap, and few sleeping masks have received as much hype as the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. It's a TikTok star in its own right with over 2.2 million views, and fans say it's worth the hype. But I gotta tell you, this sleeping mask had me at the word sleeping. I mean, who doesn't love a product that goes to work when you hit the hay? And the brand says that this product not only is designed to help make your skin feel smoother, but it helps to refine pores. And they also say that it helps to brighten your skin and also exfoliate. Plus, it's got an impressive list of ingredients that includes real watermelon extract and even hyaluronic acid and AHAs, which is really glycolic acid. And I've got to tell you the scent. It smells so good. It's like fresh watermelons. And this product isn't just a social media star. It's a star in real life. Yep, it's got 73,000 likes on Sephora.com. Okay, now get ready for another TikTok star that beauty lovers are obsessed with. The Dior Addict Lip Glow Oil and this cult and celeb fave has a hashtag with over 73 million views and climbing. And lip gloss is making a huge comeback. And this ultra shiny gloss has been selling out everywhere. And here's what gets everybody so excited about it. It's a multitasker. It's like a lip gloss and a lip care product all in one. And the brand says that the lip oil is infused with cherry oil. So it nourishes and protects and softens the lips while adding a natural color finish. In fact, the brand also says that the lip oil is formulated to adapt to all lip colors to bring out one's own unique and rosy glow. And one of the reasons why lip gloss is having such a big comeback in my opinion is we are seeing so much gloss. I mean, on the face, that's been a really big trend, that sort of shiny trend. So it makes sense that it would also transfer to the lips. So now let's talk hair love. There's a lot of love out there for this next product as well as for its founder. These are the nourishing shine drops from JVN, which is brought to you by hair guru and TV personality, Jonathan Van Ness. And the brand is so popular that the hashtag for this brand alone boasts over 10.8 million views. And I just love Jonathan's positivity and his enthusiasm and the brand's inclusive vibe. And I also love what the brand has to say about the product, that it makes your hair look like it's lit from within. I mean, shoppers really do rave about how these drops really bring about a rich glow and shine. And if you have a minute, you've got to check out the how-to videos on the site. Jonathan shows you exactly how to use this product, and it's so easy. I mean, you just take a few drops, and then you put them into your hands, you rub them together, and he says to take your hands and just rub it down from sort of the mid shaft down to the ends and work it through. And Jonathan also says that this can be used on all hair types. And the brand says that the product also helps to smooth, frizz bust, and hydrate. 
Now, next up, we have another trending and affordable accessory that, in my humble opinion, has the capability to transform any outfit in an instant. Yes, the pattern tight is having quite a moment, and we're seeing some major traction from not only social media, but also from high-end designers. And what I love the most about this trend is that you can get in on this designer runway look without the designer price tag. I've actually seen pattern tights from high-end designers starting at $200 up to even $2,500. So forgive me if I get really excited, but we've got such affordable options here. So here we have a selection of really great looking pattern tights. Everything from a herringbone to a beautiful lace to a heart motif. And we're seeing lots of heart motifs out there. That's a big trend even on its own. And my favorite way to wear them is to pair them with, say, last year's little black dress, right? And suddenly the look is transformed, it's updated. I love wearing these with trousers, especially crop trousers. So you can kind of see the pattern tight peeking out. And you know another really cool way to wear them? You can actually wear them with jeans and distressed jeans. Oh my gosh, they look so cool. You could see the pattern tight through some of the holes. It really is a little fashion trick that I love. Next, we've got a favorite from the aughts that are making a major comeback. I may have called them yoga pants, but Gen Z has dubbed them the flared legging. But one thing's for sure, whatever you call them, they are massive social media stars. So let me introduce you to the airy, real me, high-waisted crossover flare legging, and this style is a double winner. So not only does it have that great flare silhouette, Check it out, it has that crossover waistband that has become so incredibly popular. So the brand says that these leggings are made out of their real me fabric, and they say it has light support, and this fabric feels really buttery. So it's a really versatile legging. You can wear it hanging out, you can wear it to the gym, you can definitely wear it while you're doing yoga. So I totally get why these are so popular. So now for a sneak peek at spring, let's talk about an incredibly popular shoe that encompasses four big viral trends in one. This IT shoe has been on the scene for a while now and thanks to its popularity both on social media and on celebs, we don't see it going anywhere. So let me tell you about what those four trends are. First of all, we've got that mule style, the mule silhouette, which is just really slip in and easy to wear. Also, check out these braided straps, the double strap. They're also kind of padded, so that's another massive trend that we're seeing. Also, the block heel. It's a lot easier to wear than the stiletto, especially if we're transitioning from sneakers. And another big trend that we're seeing everywhere is this squared toe sole here. And I really like all of these sophisticated neutrals, and these are essentially a designer dupe. And lastly, I really think that they look expensive. So this is a great viral trend to try out coming up this spring. And this next must have is one of the coolest fashion gadgets I've run across in a long time. It's the Nori Press and it has changed the game in both design and innovation. And it is no wonder that it has over 1.4 million views on TikTok. And it's a wrinkle removing tool. And it's like a cross between an iron and a steamer. And Boy, do I wish I had one of these when I first started out in my fashion career as an assistant to a celebrity stylist. I can tell you guys that I spent about 90% of my time steaming. So I got well acquainted with the conventional steamers and I gotta tell you, pretty much all of them leak. So I was thrilled to try out the Nori and I think the design is just so cool. I mean, look at that. It almost looks like a straightening iron and it works like one too. And one of the things I like so much about when I use this is it's just really easy and it also irons both sides of the fabric at once. So you just clamp it onto the fabric and just pull it down. 
And oh my gosh, it really is a game changer in the world of ironing and steaming. You don't even need an ironing board. So I love that ease. Plus it's 1.4 pounds, so it's great for travel. You can throw it in your bag and go. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Glow Recipe Sleeping Mask, the Dior Lip Oil, the JVN Nourishing Shine Drops, the Pattern Tights, the Offline by Airy Flare Leggings, the Women's Braided Heeled Sandals, and the Nori Press Steam Iron. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's it for Style Finder. Up next, designer and lifestyle influencer Vanita Aspen is chatting with Mako and Lovu about some of her favorite must-have products. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Now, you may know her from Southern Charm. Designer and lifestyle influencer Vanita Aspen is here with us to talk all things Southern style and more. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Vanita, it's such a pleasure to have you here. How are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing great. Listen, I remember the first time I saw you on social media, I was like, wait a minute, who is this gorgeous girl? So I had to hit that follow button. What do you think, you have a huge social media following, what do you think gets people to sort of gravitate towards you? I think people gravitate towards me because I choose not to stick within an aesthetic and like I'm different every day. I show the ins and outs of daily life and the fact that everything's just not perfect. 
I love that. And I love the, um, the photos that you have of you and your mom. So cute. And then you also show a style as well. What's the key to looking pulled together? The key to looking put together is always jewelry. You have to wear like some form of earring or bracelet. That helps pull the entire look together. So if you're not feeling too strong about it, an accessory will definitely help. I agree with that. Accessories are like the cherry on top. Now, Southern right. Charm fans would just not have it if I didn't ask you. Are we going to see more of you on the show? I don't know. You're going to have to watch it. Oh, OK. <laughs> and a nice little tease there. I'm here for it. OK, speaking of things to watch, I love these items that you brought for today's show. Can we start with these portable chargers? A great deal yeah. for two of them. You yeah. get two. I chose the black and white ones. They charge super quick and they're really lightweight so they don't like weigh the bag down i feel like a lot of portable chargers are too heavy and this is like a great weight absolutely and i think they're great for every household if you think how many people in your house have devices so it's nice to always have chargers all right let's move on from charges to something that charges my life which is makeup this blush that you brought here okay first of all you look gorgeous i, have it I on. say that right you have it on okay but why have cream over powder <laughs> Cream over powder because cream looks more natural. And I love this blush because two reasons. You get a lot of product and it's super affordable at $6. Oh. And the pigmentation is unmatched. I mean, I'm swatching it right here and I have to agree with you about the pigmentation. It's unmatched. And I like this for all ages too. Looks great on everybody. Even if you have mature skin, it's beautiful. Yes. Okay, so one of the things I am guilty of, Vanita, is not cleaning my devices, even my sunglasses. I love this next pick, tell me about it. Okay, so the next pick is just so good, and I love the fact that it comes with microfiber tiles, so you make sure that there's no lint or anything like that on your screen or on your sunglasses when you're done wiping your products down. Oh, I love that. Look at how it just cleaned my sunglasses. I'm so guilty of having foggy glasses, so this is a <laughs> lifesaver. Okay, speaking of lifesavers, let's talk about being in the kitchen. A lot of people don't really like prep work when it comes to cooking. This vegetable chopper, I'm obsessed. Also, like to give you a little background, I went to culinary school. Oh. So like, look at that. I love all the little fun inventions for the kitchen. And I feel like this vegetable chopper is a lifesaver for everyone because one, no one likes to chop onions. No one likes to chop potatoes. And it just makes it so simple. It has like, this little square here and then comes with different size like blades you can see right here and it's just perfect and it's easy to clean oh i love that onions make me cry is that crazy but it's true to this day they still make me cry so i love that yes and then a little tip for you is to either run your onion under hot water or put it in the freezer right before you cut it so I shouldn't say the fumes, but like the aroma that right. they come out quickly. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And last but not least, you talk about jewelry being the key to looking pulled together. You have this jewelry organizer, which I think is fantastic. Yes, it comes in three different shapes. Um, so I also, I have one for both bracelets, necklaces, and earrings. And it's just so easy and things don't get tangled up and you just don't have to think about it when you're gonna get dressed and put your accessories on. I find that it saves me money too because I'll go out to the store, I'll shop online and be like, wait, I already have that because I can see it in my jewelry organizer. Well, Vanita, thank you so much for joining us. What else are you up to? What else are you working on next? Right now, I am working on an adaptive wear brand. So that's a project that nice. is keeping me busy. Oh, that's awesome. Listen, we look forward to following you and good luck with all your adventures. We'll see you really soon. Thank you so much. All right, bye. All right, now let's run through the products one more time. The Portable Charger, the ELF Cosmetics Cream Blush, the Woosh Screen Cleaner Kit, the Full Star Vegetable Chopper, the Strata Life Jewelry Organizer. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock has more popular products in editor's picks, like a cordless vacuum that weighs just three pounds, just in time for spring cleaning. Don't go away. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Ali Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, and we have been sharing those products we can't get enough of that we've discovered on social media. I have some more favorites from Old Navy's new three-in-one jeans, more on that in a bit, to the Va Broom, just in time for spring cleaning. See that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. Finding the perfect pair of jeans doesn't have to be hard, and Old Navy is making it easier than ever with the new Fits You denim collection. Each pair is designed to fit three different sizes to adjust to your perfect shape. This one features the best-selling Rockstar Skinny Cut, which has a flattering high-rise fit and a wallet-friendly price. And moving on to some beauty finds, Milk Beauty is one of those popular beauty brands taking over social media, and their new launch is no exception. The brand's brand new Rise Mascara is a vegan mascara that, according to the brand, is formulated to lift, lengthen, and curl lashes with weightless volume. And according to the brand, all you need is a few coats and you don't have to worry about clumping or smudging for up to 12 hours. And when it comes to accessorizing, a cute headband is the perfect way to add a little pop to any outfit. And it helps amp up a good hair day. The knotted headband trend isn't going anywhere, but pearls are actually the latest accessory that's taking over the fashion world. So with this one, you get two trends with this chic find. And you get a set of four for about $15. And if you're like me, you're probably gonna wear these all the time. And staying on the topic of hair, Heatless curlers are having an unexpected social media hit this season. These come with a set of 28 heatless waivers and all you need is about 20 for a full head of hair. And according to the brand, to use it, all you have to do is grab small sections of damp hair and weave it into the curler using the tool. And in about an hour, you're gonna get a full head of waves and curls and you've gotta see the results to believe them. And you don't have to be on hashtag clean talk to appreciate this next find. It's a two-in-one cleaning tool that's simply genius. It's a lightweight cordless broom with a built-in mini vacuum that will have you ditching that dustpan for good. The Va Broom does all the work for you. So once you're done sweeping, you just tilt the broom on its side and it sucks up all the dirt and debris in one go. Voila, 
Household chores have never been so much easier. And speaking of chores, if you're like me and your handbag is probably a catch-all for everything and it can get dirty so fast, this clean ball is really cool because it's designed to pick up dirt and crumbs, everything that's floating around in that bag. All you have to do is pop it in your purse. You can even use it in the kid's backpack and it does all the work for you. And the brand says, what's really great about this too, is you can reuse it. You just pop it open, you wash it, and you can use it over and over again. And we all wanna get organized and labels make the job so much easier. So whether you're tackling your file cabinet or a spice rack, this little wireless label maker is absolutely incredible. It creates labels using an app that lets you customize everything from size, font, and even symbols. And you know we love a QR code and this one can actually make one. Last but certainly not least is this pizza maker that's taking TikTok by storm. It is one of those things you wish you had discovered sooner. It's a rotating pizza oven and it makes delicious crispy pies in about 25 minutes. But it can also be used to cook other snacks like chicken wings and quesadillas, grilled sandwiches, and even a cookie pie. It comes with a self timer and a nonstick coating on the pan. So according to the brand, cleanup is an absolute breeze. This one has us so excited to entertain this spring and summer. This product is really great. So let's run through the products one more time. The Old Navy 3-in-1 Rockstar Jeans, the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara, the Velvet Headbands, the Heatless Curl Kit, the Va Broom, the Clean Ball, the Wireless Label Maker, and the Pizzazz Pizza Oven. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Editor's Picks and our show today. Here's a sneak peek at next week's episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Shop Today is back, bringing you amazing products, the hottest tips, and inspiring conversations. And now to celebrate Women's History Month, we're highlighting products by incredible female founders from skincare to fashion, jewelry, and more. Plus, boxing champ and entrepreneur Layla Ali stops by. What do you think your past has taught you that has brought you to be this incredible businesswoman? I always have this desire to be independent. It's not about just how many hours I work. It's really about how much I put in, how much effort I put into growing these businesses. It took a lot of hard work. It didn't just happen overnight. This is Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
But you know this feeling. Your brain is exhausted, but you still have 100 things left to do on your to-do list, and the only thing you can think about is taking a nap. <laughs> I feel that. Well, today we are beating back brain fog and fighting fatigue with the one and only nutritionist <laughs> health expert. Jo I'm going to give another you another way. Joy you Bauer. Your friend. All roads lead through Stephanie Rule. I just realized you yeah. guys have been friends for a while. Joy too. Bauer and I yeah. hadn't met. I called her during COVID yeah. and I said, I Help need me. some health advice. I am home with my kids all day, eating, baking, eating, baking. And, and she did. And what a great Perfect. student she is. And she oh did my what gosh, you suggested. Everything, and you everything. don't deprive, which is the key ever, piece of it. Ever. All right, let's talk about getting our energy back. We need our mojo. Yeah, and I think like having more energy is something everyone yeah, wants sure. more of. And believe it or not, having more energy during the day actually traces back to getting a good night's sleep. And okay. here's why. It is so important to get a solid night's sleep. And that is seven to nine hours a night because when you go to sleep, your body slows down your metabolism mm -hmm. and conserves energy. And mm -hmm. we know through research, when you conserve energy, that next day, our cells are more energy efficient. So they ignite more readily and you have more energy. So this is what we're gonna start with. So, you, so get some good sleep. The yeah, enemy. So, so the again, enemy. <laughs> well, but here, this is something really cool. You, you can roll in the sheets, but you cannot scroll in the sheets. And mm -hmm. here's why. Cute choice. <laughs> I'm not looking for either one, just FYI. <laughs> I'm a hard pass on both. Yeah. We like our sleep. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. When it's dark and you're laying down to get a good night's sleep, if you have your smartphone or your iPad mm -hmm. or a computer, the blue light that emanates off the screen is going to interfere with melatonin production. Yeah. Melatonin is a very important hormone that's released mm -hmm. in the brain that promotes sleepiness. So right. if you interfere with that production, you're okay. not going to be able to fall asleep. So get rid, get rid of, of the all phone, of the, the screens. Yes. All right, let's yes. talk about foods. So the winning formula when it comes to food mm -hmm. is protein plus fiber plus healthy fat. And here's why. Okay. The three things together steady your blood sugars okay. and will leave you feeling sustained with your energy levels. Very, very important. So I'm showing some breakfast options here. Mm -hmm. Greek yogurt with some fresh fruit. I Why love Greek it. yogurt? Because Greek yogurt has more than twice the amount of protein as traditional yogurt. And by the way, traditional yogurt is still good because it has some protein, but Greek yogurt has loads of protein. So is the sweetness, it comes from the fruit, not from like honey or something else? Well, if you, you, can, you can get a plain Greek yogurt mm -hmm. and then be in control of how much sweet you put mm -hmm. in. I would say one teaspoon of maple syrup or honey is okay, okay, but if you can omit that and just really sweeten it up with juicy, fabulous, wholesome fruit, Cause, that's... Because the sugar makes you go high and low, Exactly. Too. Okay. And so this is an apple or a banana with nut butter. Can we just look how at this How did you swirl? put this on? I didn't like Anthony stop did this, it. Stop this. He's like a genius. Yeah. And so the apple provides juicy fiber and complex carbohydrates and loads of nutrition. And the nut butter, whether, whether it's peanut butter or cashew butter or almond butter or soy nut butter, whatever butters, we love all the butters. Yeah. It's got the healthy fat and the protein. Mm -hmm. And this is oatmeal for fiber and seeds and nuts. See, we have almonds here. Right. I love pumpkin seeds. So are those, what about chia seeds? Are those important? Chia seeds are great. Good. Okay. Chia seeds are great. Yeah. All right, take us to the beverage department. Okay. I'm going to just say this is great. I don't <laughs> even know what it is. I am so excited. Take a sip of this. What is it? I made a healthy, no sugar added frappuccino. Wait, it's coffee? Okay, that's the list. Yes. So I added a shot of espresso, mm, mm. and then there's a frozen banana, I some can taste ice, the banana. It's yummy. cocoa powder for brain boosting what? compounds, and a little bit of milk. Almond milk is in this mm. one. So it's a dairy free version. It's light in it calories, tastes, and it gives you a jolt. It, it feels tastes, like a dessert. Isn't it? Yummy. Great? All it's right, great. what about just drinking water? Mm. And, and so water mm. hydration is very important, crazy important. If you're slightly dehydrated, yeah. you're going to feel fatigue. So everybody says, how much water do I need? The mm. first thing is it doesn't have to be plain water. It could be sparkling water. Coffee and tea count towards your hydration. Oh, they do? Yes, oh. as does okay. milk. Are so, you good about drinking water? Um, yes, I am. It's one of the Naturally things like, or yeah, disciplined uh, about? Well, I am disciplined, but I, tr I drink probably like six of those bottles a day. Little That's ones. amazing. Yeah. So you're, Ice, you're it actually surpassing. No. Really? Because you got to chug it, man. So you can't just when just it's down. when it's room temperature yeah. or you have a straw, you could suck it down yeah. more easily. What if you like it, it cold? Good. Ice water is like a ten in terms of taste. Room temperature is like a four. So you only like ice water? Correct. Do you drink a lot of it? No, I do not. See? And I need to. Okay. Yeah. You'll like this guy. So this what is, is this? a spa water. Cute. I just added some lemon slices and cucumber and mm -hmm. some herbs. So it jazzes it up. It gives a little bit of pizzazz. So it's yeah. more flavorful. 
beautiful. You don't like it. And here's no, a I great do. rule of thumb. Like it. You take your weight, <laughs> divide it in half. So let's say you weigh 140 pounds. That's 70 ounces of water you should strive for every single day. Okay. And, and what... <laughs> Do you I'm like just, it? I'm, I do. do you like it? I, I'm, I know how, how little water I drink, so I'm trying and to get my reps in. These, by the way, guys, I made you a batch of my chocolate energy muffins. So these are light and they're fluffy and they're super delicious and moist, but I added in hmm. some espresso. So you get a shot, a little bit of a jolt, and oh, we're going to put this on Real the good. website. Great. Yeah. Joy, thank you. It's good to see you here. Uh, you can Always. get that, oh. that energy muffin recipe today.com slash food. Love you, Joy. Love you. We're going to reach for the weekend today nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to show us how to turn an easy sheet pan recipe into the ultimate reboot bowl. Good morning, Joy. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. Lindsay, it's so nice to be here with you. you the too. last time we were together, I think we were having a vegetarian feast oh, in Connecticut, yes. right? We were at the right. tavern. That's, That's right. right. Yes. That's right. That was And so you know what nice. I was thinking? I was listening to 70 years, your anniversary. I have actually been with the show. It's going on 16 years. Wow. Is that crazy? Right. 16 well, let's get years. Congratulations to you. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to transform the easiest one sheet recipe into an energizing reboot bowl that has literally layers and layers of yummy goodness. But the best part, it is very, very simple to put together. So I'm gonna start with the sheet, the sheet pan recipe. Here I have three heaping cups of broccoli. So the, the, the big uh, theme here is gonna be lots of plants. This is three heaping cups of uh, sweet potato that I cubed, or you can ap absolutely use any kind of acorn or winter squash as well. And now I have more cruciferous vegetables, so loads of fiber, and that is our cauliflorets. Now I have one can of rinsed and drained, and very important, it's padded dry chickpeas because I'm adding in a lot of fiber and some protein now. A little bit of olive oil. I have about two to three tablespoons in here because I want all the seasonings to stick. Now, I like to over season. So I'm going to put in, th uh, this is two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of onion powder. And I had some fresh rosemary in my fridge. So I chopped up and I have about two tablespoons here. But it's eater's choice. You can put in whatever herbs that you want. And you're just going to mix this up mm -hmm. to evenly distribute everything. You pour it onto your sheet pan. I missed it with a little bit of olive oil spray. And then I just put this. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I, I forgot about my salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. But it goes in the oven, set at 425 on the middle rack, just for about 30 to 35 minutes. And I flip it halfway through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you are going to get these gorgeous char marks. Look at this. Oh. This just came out of the oven. Do you, can oh, you see great. this? Let that me say. Nice. So when you're building the yeah. bowl, Joy, what layer goes first? Okay. So now for the fun part. And you are the boss of your bowl because there's so many different directions that you can customize this bowl. So here's my bowl. Mm -hmm. And the first layer is going to be dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So it could be spinach, kale. It could be any lettuce that you want. Ooh. The next is going to be a heaping mound of those delicious caramelized addictive veggies mm. that we roasted mm. then a little bit of fruit so i'm oh. using a pear because i don't think pear gets enough love guys and it actually has a little bit more fiber than apples oh, but you that. can also use an apple mm -hmm. you could also use pomegranate seeds or um even uh, dried cranberries oh. or cherries anything goes and then the protein is your choice so wow. i put out a question on Instagram earlier this morning, and I asked my followers, what should I put on? Lentils, salmon, black beans, shrimp. I have chicken. I have tofu. I'm going to tell you the it's tofu exactly came in last place. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and go for the salmon this time. And last but not least, we so have the this Her mellow. Her the salmon to put in the leafy yeah. bowl. Okay. <laughs> and we have a mellow but mouth-watering tahini dressing that I'm going to show you how to make because everybody needs this. We're not going to have time We're going to put that. that on the website. We'll put it on the website. But okay, thank you, you so much. It. That looks fantastic. Look, All right. Look at this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a drizzle. Beauty. Because oh. you got Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were 
Bastille in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Joy Bauer is whipping up a quick and easy frittata that's packed with veggies and flavor. Take it away, Joy. Hey guys, spring is in the air and it gives me the opportunity to feature two seasonal standouts. First up, artichokes. Artichokes are packed with fiber and they're also considered a prebiotic, which means it increases the good bacteria within our gut to aid in digestion. Next, asparagus. Asparagus is an excellent source of vitamin K and folate. And while they're very low in calories, they are mighty potent in the nutrition department. So taking these two superstars, we are gonna make the ultimate spring frittata. When it comes to asparagus, you're just gonna snap off the tough outer stem and then cut your asparagus into one to two inch pieces. For this recipe, I'm gonna saute them in small pieces so we get them nice and soft. And now for the artichokes. So for this recipe, I'm gonna use artichoke hearts and it's so simple. I drained and rinsed them from the can and now I'm patting them dry. You wanna get them as dry as possible and I'll give it a rough chop. So now that the veggies are prepped, we are going to make the egg mixture. So here I have eight large whole eggs mixed with four egg whites. And here I have half a cup of a Greek yogurt or light sour cream. I'm putting in two to four tablespoons of dill and a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And you're just gonna mix this up just until the yolks and the whites blend together. And you can see I have little lumps of the Greek yogurt scattered throughout, and that's okay because all of that is going to blend and melt when we bake it off in the oven. Now we're gonna head over to the stove and saute our vegetables. I'm adding in my asparagus, and I'm also adding in some onion. So we saute these vegetables for about five to seven minutes. They'll start to soften up. The onions will get slightly browned. The great thing about frittatas, is they're totally customizable. It's really the ultimate kitchen sink meal. Now I'm gonna toss in a little bit of garlic. Just stir it around for about 30 seconds. And I'm ready to introduce my artichoke hearts. The skillet is screaming spring and my kitchen smells amazing. I'm just gonna spread out the veggies and I'm gonna pour in our egg mixture. And last but not least, a little bit of cheese. I'm using Parmesan. Now I let it sit on the stove undisturbed just to let these outside edges slightly firm, just a few minutes. Then I transfer it right into the oven, set at 350 and bake it for about 20 minutes. And that's all there is to it. I like to add little puddles of pesto on top and then a drizzle of balsamic glaze. It is the perfect meal to put spring in your step. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so you know, happy. Me. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here with two recipes that are good for us and good for the planet. Joy, good morning. Happy Earth Day. Hey, good morning. Joy. Happy Earth Day. And obviously, the theme is going to be all about plants. And I say that for two reasons. Plants, of course, shower our body with all of the right stuff. Um, fiber and antioxidants, vitamins and minerals, but also because according to a study in the environmental journal Nature, the production of meat products generates the majority of food-related greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah. So everybody would be sort of reducing their carbon footprint and contributing personally if we just wiggle in more plant-forward meals. And I'm not saying exclusively eating vegetarian or vegan, right. but the more plants that we could eat, the better off the earth and the environment is going to be. And that goes for beans for sure. too, right? Beans are fabulous. And you know what I'm making first. I have taken on a beloved classic. Oh. I'm going to be making what I'm calling the incredible vegan taco meat. And I'm telling you, I, hmm. I think I nailed it. My macho meat eaters in the house can't get enough of this. Okay. So the okay. cool part, yes, um, that's, a, that's a bold statement, but, <laughs> but, but I think I can back it up. The best part is it's so simple. So there's only three ingredients and I'm adding to a food processor, three vegan powerhouses. This is two and a half cups of cooked lentils. Lentils, of course, are packed with protein and fiber. Mm -hmm. Now I have one, this is just a can of rinsed and drained black beans. Okay. And I'm using black because I want it to be a dark color like mm. meat, but certainly you could use any bean that you have in your pantry. And this is one cup of toasted walnuts. Uh -huh. And then all, all I'm gonna do is pulse it. And what I'm gonna tell everybody is, it's a couple of pulses because you don't want to puree it. You want to have a lot of great texture. So it's basically, whoops, pulse, 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 and we're done. Oh, That's okay. it. So now what I'm going to do is take you, I'm going to unplug this. I'm taking you over to the stove, and I'm going to show you how we cook it up just like ground meat. So come with me. Okay. Oh, wow. It looks. Wait, that's it? I, it looks like ground beef. This is it, and it's not even seasoned. Can you... You see how there's a lot of texture still in it? So there's the lentils, the walnuts, and the black beans. Joy? I love this. Joy, show us yep. this, this other one that's going to help us waste less fresh fruit as well. Okay, so very carefully, let me... Okay, this is just the taco uh, seasoning blend from the store, or you could do a do-it-yourself. I'll put that, you know, on social and on the website. And you just mix this up mm -hmm. and come right over here. And so very quickly, this is what it looks like. Oh, that We're looks back wow. over here. 
So that's right? just like a regular little taco bar you can sit at. Yes, it's and it's hearty and substantial. I'm telling you, your meat eaters will love this. Okay. And you'll feel perfect. really good about the environment. So next we're doing something really cool. This is the first time I've ever tried this and we were so pleased with the result. You know how like you go to the grocery store, you buy all this fresh fruit, and then it sits in your fridge, yep. and yes. when you're in the mood for it, you have a little bit of mold yeah. on the raspberries, the raspberries or the blackberries. They're always moldy. Yes, yes. Oh, so yeah, this is a way to cut back on waste. So I had three. I take three cups of whatever fruit you have that's sort of seen its heyday mm -hmm. in the fridge. You're gonna chop it up and you put it in the blender with two tablespoons of honey. And so th my fruit's going in, and then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of honey right in there, and you whirl it up, and okay. you're gonna puree it so that it's totally smooth and velvety. I've also done this with chopped mango, okay. pineapple can work, any combination can work. Then you spread it out on parchment paper on your baking sheet, okay. and you pop it in the oven oh. at one, between 150 and 175, it has to be under 200. And you do that because you're going to dehydrate it. But here's the thing. You need a lot of time, six to eight hours in the oven. So it's a great rainy day activity mm -hmm. or if you're working from home. Now, look what it comes out like. See this? It's like a fruit leather. Oh, wow. And, but now we're going to take it to the next level now. So now we take our scissors just like this, yep. and we have the parchment paper. And I'm going to cut it. Oh, you let it cool. Yeah. You cut it like this. And guys, you roll it up and you basically it's have perfect. created, yes, rolled up fruit leather. And look at this. I have, the, it's chewy and yeah. it's sweet and addictive. It's That's really, great. really delicious oh, and such a fun it. activity. Look at that. That's, That's a good so idea, great. Joy. Oh, Thank Joy, you. I love, love this. Fun? Thank you so I'm much. I'm so glad. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer remixing boring lunch sandwiches with two tasty wraps. Oh, Joy. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm celebrating the weekend with two deliciously healthy wraps, a chicken Caesar wrap and a caprese Caesar wrap. So the common theme here is my lightened up creamy Caesar dressing with a surprising ingredient, and that would be an avocado. So I'm gonna pop all of this right into a blender. Next, some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and garlic, W sauce, some lemon juice, Dijon mustard for some tang, and then optional anchovy paste. And last but not least, six tablespoons of water. And we're gonna whirl this up in a blender. You can see how creamy this is. It tastes just like the real deal, but for a fraction of the calories. This is just 20 calories per tablespoon, so you can feel good about using a lot. Now for the build, starting with a chicken Caesar salad. I'm adding crunchy romaine lettuce together with some grated Parmesan cheese and some sliced cooked chicken with some of our homemade Caesar dressing. Just stir this all up and lay out a tortilla that fits your eating style. I have whole wheat tortilla, but it can be gluten-free, low carb, anything goes. Spread on some of our Caesar dressing right on the tortilla. It's got a nice green color from the avocado. I think that adds personality and fun and add in the yummy filling. Tuck in the sides, and then you roll it right up. It's so simple, it's so delicious, and every bite is packed with protein, fiber, and tons of flavor. Next up, a caprese Caesar wrap if you feel like going meat-free. This time I'm using a tomato-themed tortilla. I'm putting on some of my creamy Caesar, spreading it out, and simply layering irresistible calcium-packed mozzarella cheese, juicy vitamin C-filled and lycopene-filled tomatoes, and of course, some fragrant aromatic basil leaves. Tuck in the sides and roll this right up. How easy was that? This is so good. Whether you choose to make a chicken Caesar 
or compresse Caesar, that's a wrap. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. What comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Joy Bauer is here to show you how to make your sides stand out this time. All That's right. right. Well, here we go. And we're starting with cucumbers. Mm. Kind of shocking, but let me say the cucumbers are comprised of more than 95% water. So that means they're great in terms of hydrating, mm -hmm. right? And every part of your body functions better and your energy goes up when you're well hydrated. But here's something really cool. Cucumbers are only 45 calories a cuke. Mm -hmm. They are naturally low in sodium and they're packed with potassium. So while they deliver good hydration, they also get rid of bloat. They get oh. rid of excess water that, that you case, don't want. Just give me the whole <laughs> So then well, how are you shaking it up today? I'm going to shake it up by making buffalo cucumbers. Okay, does it matter what kind of cucumber you use? No, you can use any cucumber that you want. We were, so, were showing a whole variety mm -hmm. over there. So here we have chopped tomato. Mm -hmm. We've got blue cheese and scallions. We're going to add our feature food, all the cukes. So that's the, where you, you scoop out? Yeah. Well, yeah, this is just um, peeled and mm -hmm. chopped cukes. And now, Al, put some of that sauce on. This is my buffalo dressing and give it a whirl. What's the sauce? And this, the sauce is um, oh, non-fat yeah. Greek yogurt, lots of seasonings, and of course, <laughs> hot <you> sauce. <laughs> and while you're doing that, wait, I'm, what was it again? It's um, I'm gonna I'm it's gonna on Instagram the that out because yeah. I really want to try it. It's afterwards. on the website. I'm sending okay, you the link. Yes. And then just to bring it to the next level, mm -hmm. cut your cucumber lengthwise. Scoop Let's it. scoop out the middle. And then just put that in there in the middle. Yeah, and then put this right in the middle and look and how cute it. these are. Your sleeves. Okay. These right? are great. And you can make it as hot and fiery as you oh, like. Oh, good. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, my favorite, Brussels sprouts. Brussels oh, sprouts. I'm glad you said that because they tend to be polarizing. Don't and I want to give Brussels sprouts some love. Mm -hmm. So Brussels are part of the cruciferous vegetable family, and they can reduce certain types of cancers, the risk for certain types of cancers. Also, here's a cool fact. One cup delivers more than 100% of your vitamin C for the day. Okay. So for people that don't love them, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a version of superfood Ooh. pigs in blankets. Okay. And I'm calling these Brussels in blankets. Okay. These are trimmed, mm -hmm. sliced in half, right. and you put a little bit of olive oil on them. Okay. And now you take your turkey bacon nice and lean, mm -hmm. and you're going to wrap your blanket nice around. Enough. And you pop it right in the oven on 400 for about 25 minutes, Let and you go. get these delicious and babies. And the kids That's great. eat and them, too. Yeah. You know? or put I've real, seen a lot of picky eaters gobble those down. Real bacon around it, and you've got a hit. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, husband said the same thing. <laughs> and a mommy. Edamame is great. It's almost like a perfect food because it's a blend of plant-based protein, mm -hmm. fiber, and heart-healthy fats. So mm -hmm. it keeps your blood sugars steadied mm -hmm. and it sustains your energy levels. And You're it also it has yes, it has minerals in it that can prevent muscle cramping too. So I love edamame steams, sure. right? In mm -hmm. the pot, out of the pot. But to take it to the next level, I'm making garlic sesame edamame. That's sesame oil, okay. some minced garlic. I put some red crushed pepper and salt. You mix that around. Mm, you put enjoy. it on your steamed edamame. Mm. And this is, I think, restaurant That's really worthy. good. Isn't that great?
If you think you know Kim Kardashian from that reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, I'm just here to say you don't know nothing yet about Kim. Kim Kardashian, she's a brand, a multi-billion dollar brand with nearly 300 million followers on social media. She is the co-founder of a perfume collection, a makeup line, and so much more. But the biggest seller for Kim Kardashian is herself. People cannot get enough of this woman, of her family, her lifestyle, her choices. And while, yes, she is in the midst of a hectic work schedule, and she's also in the middle of a divorce from Kanye West, the father of her four kids, she's calmer than she seemed in a decade. She is in a new relationship with comedian and Saturday Night Live cast member Pete Davidson. She just launched another campaign for her shapewear line, Skims, and her famous family, well, they're about to embark on a new chapter of the reality show, The Kardashians. This time it's on Hulu. So what is Kim Kardashian making space for these days? Well, law school aside, she is making space for herself. Kim, it's so great to see you. I'm so happy that you have time to sit with me today. I've got a a podcast called Making Space. And I weirdly feel like you're in a moment in your life where everything, everything is slowing down. Everything seems more peaceful and simpler. And I'm not sure if I'm reading into it, but I'm getting this total vibe about your life today, that there's a more of a calm, uh, a more calm going on. Am I right? There definitely is a lot of calm. I'd say when you have four kids, they'll never really fully be calm, like ever. And I think when people say, oh, you're so much calmer now, or you seem like at peace now, I was definitely at peace and, and loving not being calm before. I don't think that there's like, the two are pit against each other or that one is better than the other. I think at the phase in my life that I was at for the last decade, I've loved and it made me who I am today and I've grown and evolved, but it was super spontaneous and so much going on and so amazing. Um, I think I just like prefer now to, I work, you know, really hard and long hours and in school. And um, I think that what I choose to do with my off time now is just probably a little bit more simpler things. And so I feel more of a sense of inner calmness, but it doesn't but my life definitely isn't calm. I think people around me would be like, do you ever take a minute, you know? Um, so yes, there, there is a calmness for sure, but I loved every phase that I've been in in my life. Not too long ago, I ended a eight year relationship and it was not simple. Did you know for a long time that it wasn't the right fit? Were you just continuing or was it something that kind of came on? No, I think that, you know, in life, it's especially, you know, I've been divorced before and it's extremely difficult. I would say getting a divorce with children is a whole other level of pain and hard times that I just didn't even know existed. Um, but I really wanted to make a decision and it wasn't a quick decision. It wasn't, you know, it was something I think just over time spending a lot of time apart and realizing, especially during the whole like quarantine time and having to spend a lot of time together after spending so much time apart, you just realize what really makes you happy. And, um, you know, I think some people might try to think maybe it's a selfish selfish decision because I do have four kids and I do want to be mindful of everyone's feelings involved. But I think like for once I was like, I want to really choose my happiness over anything and my peace of mind. And I think I like something just stuck out to me. Uh, my mom used to always like cry to me when I was in these, you know, bad relationships and you know, college and years ago. And she used to say, all I want for my kids and all I want for you is peace of mind. And when I like woke up and realized that I didn't have that, that's all I was looking for. And so I think that no matter what, it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone didn't try and it doesn't mean that I don't wish that it, you know, had turned out differently and, and there's nothing more than you'd want for everyone to be happy. 
but I think it also showed a lot of personal strength for me because I was really a people pleaser and I wanted everyone else to be happy that I finally was like, why am I measuring and trying to make other people happy over myself? And that takes a lot of strength to do, even if you know that it'll make your kids upset as well for a time period. I think, you know, one day they're going to grow up and be out of the house and it's just going to be me and I'm going to have to sit there with my happiness. And um, I saw, you know, my mom stay in a relationship too long when she wasn't as happy. And, and I just never wanted to, once I knew for sure in my heart and soul, I just wanted, I, I realized everyone's going to heal quicker if I just make the move instead of not being my authentic self and not finding my inner peace. Well, there's a great Alicia Keys song I just heard with Brandy Carlisle, and it's called I Have a Voice. And it gives me chills when I hear it because when you're a pleaser, a people pleaser, your voice gets squished down. Sometimes it's so silent you can't even hear it. You don't even whisper to yourself anymore. You're just like, you know what? I'm just going to plod along and go along my merry way. But um, do you kind of believe that when you are peaceful, your kids will be too? Like it's almost like they feel your Absolutely. total vibe. Absolutely. I think when you're happy, your kids are happy. And even if it's hard and they don't understand at the time, I mean, I went through it and I understood it eventually with my parents. And I just think there's also that's as a part of life. And these are also growing lessons and learning lessons for my kids too. And so I think that they will ultimately be better people when they're faced with hard times and faced with real life situations. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News. Streaming free now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. How do you trust, this is something for everybody who's been in a relationship that didn't work, and then you see something that might work, but then you think, I'm not sure, I don't know. You get gun shy, you get afraid, I don't wanna run, you know, you just get afraid, but it seems to me that you followed some instinct in you, your soul or your spirit or something, that said, yes, this is something to try with Pete. Yeah, I think that, you know, Sometimes things happen when you just least expect it. Yeah. It was like the last thing that I was really planning on. Um, and so when it did happen, we were kind of like, oh my God, I wasn't like planning on this and this isn't even what I was thinking of. And like, it just makes it that much sweeter and so much more fun when you just, Sometimes you just can't plan everything out and you can't, you have to be open to it and you have to like, you know, I definitely took my time. I took like, you know, 10 months or something before I dated or talked to anyone and I just wanted that time to really figure out and go through the motions. Am I making the right decision? How do I feel about this? Like you'll never know until you're put in situations. Um, and so once I went through all of the motions, I finally was like, okay guys, I am so ready to meet someone. And I randomly did. And 
I think you just, like Chloe asked me this question once. She was like, how do you know to trust a person? Like, how do you know to trust? And I was like, I've never thought about that. I've always been really trusting and I've never really had a guard up, but sometimes you just know. And sometimes you just like know when to trust. And so I just, I kind of go with it and I feel like everything has happened that could possibly happen that is heartbreaking, you know, in all of our lives. I've seen it with my sisters and my mom and just like, we all know someone that's been through a really hard time in relationships and everyone's been okay and everyone comes out okay. So you just have to like let yourself go and open yourself up to receive something and just be a good person and you'll get that back and no matter what, everyone's gonna be okay. That's kind of like my outlook on everything with life. It is, it is. Do you trust yourself again to get married again? I wanna live in the moment. I definitely want to, you know, I do love a relationship. That's the kind of like girl that I am. I don't really want to be, you know, dating around and stuff like that, but I do live in the moment. And I do think that I am holding, you know, a little bit more close to my heart on certain aspects of my relationship with Pete. And it feels good just to know that like, we have this connection and we have our little bubble of a relationship world that we live in that like not a lot of people know about. Mm. I, I think it's cool, even the little things we do know, you go, up, you go out for pizza, you're like, oh, everything's just cool and regular and not so, not such a we big deal. We were driving in the car yesterday and I just like looked at him and I was like, thank you. And he's like, what? And I was like, for running errands with me. Like, this is so much fun just to like go to a doctor's appointment or go to the dentist and just like run errands. Like I'm having so much fun. <laughs> it's so, it's like back to the beginning, back to before everything, yeah. right? I mean, and, and again, like it's not to say that any amazing big experience I had was mm -hmm. not so much fun as well and so worth it. It's just like where I'm at in life, I I feel like we worked so hard and we just want to enjoy, you know, different things like, and, and I'm just so content. That's a beautiful word, by the way. Okay, if you had a day that was just for you, Kim, you woke up, your kids were all being taken care of. Pete was busy. Where's this day? You open your eyes, it's a beautiful sunrise. You have one day for Kim, just for Kim. How would you, and no work, how would you fill that day? Oh my gosh, I would, I would work out because I love to work out. Um, yes. I would yeah. hopefully be waking up on the beach somewhere, really beautiful, mm. um, and just lay in bed all day and watch TV and movies and eat in bed. <laughs> I'm like such a homebody. I love to stay home. I love that you eat in bed. Uh, okay, some people are totally nope. against that. I have that. a dust buster by my bed, in my, in my <laughs> side table drawer. I hate crumbs in the bed. So I definitely will put down a, a, a towel. I have trays, I have the most comfortable trays and I just eat on the trays and my dust buster is always on deck. Okay, snack of choice in oh bed. Oh my God, well, I'm eating extremely clean now. I love to just eat my dinners and stuff, oh. but I mean my favorite snacks okay, ever, yeah. like Cheetos and mm -hmm. cookies yeah. and Stuff triscuits like. and like so many random little things. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job 
is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Do you feel, I feel like your life is full. Are there things that you feel like you are missing? Any puzzle pieces that aren't quite there yet? If you say, if I just, I'm just working toward that. I feel like you have so many irons in the fire that it's hard to quantify, but is there, is there something that you feel like needs to snap into place? Yeah, I really gotta like get it together with law school. It's really hard. Yeah. I gotta like, I gotta finish. I have like, you know, almost two years left. Mm -hmm. And um, I have th I study three hours a day every day, and it is really hard. And I just can't wait. I keep on saying like, okay, I can't even entertain this business thing or this that I can't put another thing on my plate until school is done. I need to finish school, and once that happens, I will be a different human being. Do you kind of feel that sometimes you're underestimated when you walk into a room, Kim? Absolutely. And I've always been the underdog. Always. And that's okay with me. Like I'm, if anything, I like for someone to really be un like unpleasantly surprised and mm -hmm. maybe expect less and be blown away when maybe I give them more than they thought that I would ever give them, you know, but that's always mm -hmm. just been what people have perceived. And I don't know if that's mm -hmm. why I've worked so hard to try to figure it out and to try to show people. I mean, you know, your life changes and what you care about mm -hmm. can all change and grow and evolve. And so I really don't mind being the underdog and being thought differently and proving myself because I think that's what always has like kept that fire under me. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't understand it at the time or couldn't understand certain people's decisions, I, um, I like applaud people's growth and where they're at. And um, yeah, I really just don't mind being that person and that underdog. I mean, people. can you just line out, just give me one snapshot of a day? Because I don't think, I, I know you and I know how hard you work. There's not a harder, a person who works harder. Line out your day for me. You wake up and go. I wake up at 5.40, I go to the gym from 6 to 7, 7.05, get the kids up, get them all ready for school, all four of them, help brush their teeth, get their uniforms on, eat breakfast, get them out the door, drive them to school, come back, start glam um, or study. Mm -hmm. It's like I have that few hour study mm -hmm. time or glam and or it's vice mm -hmm. versa. Then I film, and then I either go to a Skims campaign or a Skims fabric meeting, and then um, I'm, you know, relaunching my beauty brand soon. So it's like formulas and products and packaging and you know meetings all day, and then um, pick the kids up from school. Or if I'm in the middle of a shoot or something and I can't, I meet them after school. Always have dinner with mm -hmm. the kids, and then at nighttime either do my reading for studying for school or um, just do all my like skims content and organize, I'm big on organizing and making sure everything's in place. And then I go to bed around, I put all the kids to bed and then I'm finally to bed around 10.30 myself. Oh my and then the day That's starts day. all That's over again. That's a day. Kim started the shapewear brand Skims in 2019, filling a gap in the market with underwear, shapewear, and loungewear for people of all shapes and sizes and skin tones. Today, the company is worth billions. Did you ever imagine that Skims would be a $3.2 billion company? I did I mean, not. I had hopes, obviously. I had such high hopes because I just felt like anytime there's something missing in the marketplace that you're always trying to find a solution for, other people are trying to find that same solution. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that, you know, in shapewear, there just was not size inclusivity and 
color tone inclusivity, I just knew that even just like where the seams were and everything that I was mm -hmm. changing on shapewear myself and wanting to perfect, I found that creating my own line was just going to be my best bet. And I love every minute of it. I mean, I come up with mm -hmm. every campaign, every style, every fabric. I'm at every campaign. Like, it's just e even doing the one with the the my favorite icons. You know, I wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. in that campaign. I just went to go see how they were doing and bring a beignet truck for them as a little <laughs> treat. And they were like, oh, no, no, you're getting in this campaign. You're getting in. And I was like, oh, my God, what? I, I wasn't prepared, and I didn't get a spray tan, and I didn't, you know, and they were like, who cares? Get in it. You're in, and you did. And I did, and it was so much fun, and I'll have that memory forever. But I just have so many fun ideas that it's like my baby. You know, anytime I work on something now, it has to be like, I'm so obsessed, it's my baby. I can't, you know, wait to just show people what we have coming, and it's so much fun. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. <laughs> it's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Who comes back together? Oh, I'm so you know, happy. Me. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Well, keeping up with the Kardashians, we all saw, we watched as you bid that farewell. And sometimes when something's done, it's done. You just lock the box and say, that was a good ride. See you later, alligator. But something happened. This thing got another life. Uh, it's on Hulu. So what was it that made you decide, maybe we're not done yet? Um, in all honesty, a bidding war yeah. from streaming services came in. And we just were like, OK, how can we? We worked so hard for so many years. And like it was, you know. So it's the best lesson, but then it was just a really good opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. And we thought, you know what, let's take a year off. Let's not film for a year and let's let life happen. And we did. Mm -hmm. And then we all knew that we were going to miss it. Like we just were like, it yeah. was a bittersweet thing where we just felt like our time mm -hmm. on the network was up and our time just together like that was up. And then just coming together again was so much fun. The first day of filming was so weird. We were just, Why? we couldn't believe that we were filming again. And, and just like the way that we film is a little bit different. I think the viewer would love to just see, or hopefully they'll love it, just how documentary style it is and just how individual mm. it is. And you see mm -hmm. each sister and family member really on their own and kind of separate. And then we kind of all come together where the last show was like, all together all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think just knowing that it was gonna be a little bit different and that's such a scary thing, like to start over and to, you know, cause keeping up was so iconic. We're so close mm -hmm. to the producers, you know. We loved everyone and it was like, how do we start over? Is Are we making such a big mistake? Should we have just left it there? But I think after seeing the edits and, and seeing how it's shot and we're so excited and I'm just so excited for the viewer to see it. Well, I have to talk about just you and your sisters for one second, because I remember it was years ago, but Kathy Lee and I went because Kendall was in a fashion show. Uh, she was walking the catwalk. And when we got there, all of you guys were there. There were no cameras. There was nothing. You guys were screaming like it was the first time you'd seen Kendall on the catwalk. Oh, I know. And I said in that minute, that's why the show's successful. 
because they love each other. Camera lights on, camera lights off. They're supporting and they're screaming to her like like they had never seen her do it before. And I was cracking up and Kathy Lee's like, that's how they are, of course. But that's the magic, isn't it? Like that's the thing that makes Kathy people lean Kathy used to in. say that all the time. She used to say yeah. like, you guys, when we were kids, like, like super yeah. young, she would be like, I, I was a teenager, and she would she would say like, "You guys are insane! Like, what? Where's the camera? Like, reality TV was just starting out." And she was like, "You guys just have to have your own show. This is insane." Yeah, um, she said it. Yeah, but I think that we're the same. You know, <laughs> cameras on, like you said, cameras off. I mean, there's not mm-hmm. one of my friends from high school that can say I'm any different now than I was back in high school. Mm-hmm. And I think we've just always maintained that. And I feel so lucky that we've had each other as a family to come up together. I mean, to think about it, mm-hmm. we all got our first check together. We all bought our first car together. We all bought, you know, got our first play. Like we had each other. We all ran into mm-hmm. our first celebrity that we were freaking out over. Like we had every same experience yeah. together as a family. So it's like just different than one of us moving out here from you know, a different state and calling the other sister saying, oh my God, guess who I just met? Or, oh my God, guess what I just got? Like, we just, we kind of were able to share every experience together, which I think is pretty cool Mm -hmm. and has kept us super grounded. But yeah, we support each other no matter what. We fight just like every family. I mean, I think that when we started filming, we couldn't have even imagined half the stuff that was gonna happen and go on Mm -hmm. in our lives. Yeah. filming I mean we thought how are we going to get to a season two we have nothing to film mm-hmm. about you know mm-hmm. and so I just feel lucky that we're starting a, a new journey um on Hulu and and I hope that the fans like it just as much as they liked keeping up I feel like we're rushing a hundred miles an hour and I feel like you know they talk about how the the top layer of the ocean is very very tumultuous but if you go down deep it's calm and it's peaceful and up on the top layer, they say it's like it's the things you got to do. I got to I got to pick up the kids. I got to go to work. I got to get to the meeting. I got to check on the skims. But if you go deeper, it's calm and peaceful. What what do you hope to make space for in this coming year in your life? I just hope to make as much space for my kids. To be honest, mm. I try to spend as so much time with them. I actually hope to make space for myself too, just to have mm. you know a little vacay without the kids maybe, or, yeah. you know, just, I think that's super important is to always make space for yourself, but but to make mm-hmm. space for your kids when they really need you and just make sure that you're there to do homework and all the little things add up to, to the big things. So I just, mm-hmm. um, I do make space for that and I just wanna continue to do that. Yeah, my favorite parenting hack when I'm asking my kids something is, the only thing I say to them is, Tell me more. That's it. My only line to them. And then all of a sudden, out comes the entire day. Yeah. When I start asking them specifics, they don't, they don't, they're like, I don't know, nothing. Tell me more. And they go, let me think of some. Oh, guess what happened, mom? And they tell me some beautiful story. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that from you. That's a good one. Kim, I love you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh, my gosh. Love you. Thank you for having me. You got it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.
Janelle, it's great to see you. Oh, it is great to be seen. Can we just start with this look, this outfit? Mm. Tell me who we're wearing, what we're wearing, mm. all of it. Well, we are officially in the Memory Librarian book. This is a look inspired by the lead character, C. Shet, uh, who is the Memory Librarian. And this is custom uh, Dead Lotus Couture. So I worked with uh, Nanja, who is the designer. She and I went back and forth on this look together. We took an informal poll. We've been doing this show for six years. You officially are the coolest human being I've ever sat across from. So just wanted to give you that honor oh, here. And wow. thank you very much. Well, Cheers to I that. would love to take that, <laughs> but I'm an android. Right. So I'm not 100% human. Right. So I have to give that to someone else. Yes, fair but enough. But I appreciate the offer. <laughs> I'm honored. My human side is honored. So I can't wait to dig in and talk to you about this extraordinary book. I was saying to you, okay, Janelle Monet, we want you to come out with a book. Maybe it's a memoir. You have an amazing personal story as well. And you said, I don't think so. I want to write something a little more challenging. So just for people who are thinking about picking this up, is it even possible <laughs> in, a, in a little while to explain what this book is about? So uh, The Memory Librarian, this book, this short story collection was grown from the same soil as Dirty Computer, my 2018 album and film that I released. They drained us of our dirt and all the things that made us special. And then you were lost, sleeping, and you didn't remember anything at all. The Memory Librarian deals with this totalitarian society uh, regime New Dawn. New Dawn is kidnapping dirty computers, people who will not assimilate, people that refuse to not walk in their full authenticity. New Dawn's taking their memories, swiping them clean, and giving them new identities. And so each story deals with protagonists, black and brown folks, folks in the LGBTQIA plus communities who just refuse to assimilate. The story, I mean, obviously there are echoes of your own story in here, I think it's fair to say, given the groups that are represented in this book, and also you're being, if I may, a dirty computer yourself, which I is am. which is to say you're not going to be something that the culture wants you to be or the music business wants you to be. So do these stories all come from somewhere within you? Yeah, I'm I'm sprinkled in a in in, in a lot. Um, but it's a community, you know, and that was super important. Community uh, making sure that not just my own personal story was represented, but there's so many of my friends and my family members, um, my friends in the trans community that I wanted to highlight in the non-binary community. Like, there's so much of us, there's so much intersection, and I wanted to get into that nuance. I worked with Aliyah Don Johnson on the Memory Library, and, uh, which, you know, it was a thought experiment that I had. I was like, what if there was this memory librarian, this, this, this black woman, who literally kept and stored the memories of everybody in the city. Like she knew their pasts. Before, you know, before they were wiped clean, she knew who they were. And this memory librarian wants to fall in love. But how do you fall in love when you know everybody's secrets? Mm -hmm. And, um, Time Box I worked on with Eve L. Ewing. It speaks about time poverty. For black and brown folks who have been um, having to spend a significant amount of time just trying to reach the American dream and go find the boots to really pull, you know, ourselves up from, from with our bootstraps, whatever that whole terminology means. Like, mm really thinking about if you could get time back, reclaiming my time in the words of Maxine Waters, <laughs> how would you reclaim your time? And so Eve and I had a wonderful time doing that. And then, you know, Cherie Renee Thomas, I worked on a short story with uh, Time Box Altered. I worked on um, uh, uh, one with Danny Lore called Nevermind and Save Changes with uh, Johanka Delgado. I'm so fascinated by the, sort of the origins of this story because it's an allegory that speaks as you just laid out to everything that's happening in our culture right now. But it's such a different way to tell the story than just coming out and saying it to create this place in the future mm. where all these things happen. 
it's kind of like your music too. It's always original. It's always interesting. How was this born? Where does the dirty computer concept come from? Where does all this come from within you? A real living nightmare. I had a nightmare, um, and I woke up and I had my iPhone and I just had to like record everything I could remember. But I had a nightmare that I was at a movie theater. Went to go get popcorn, um, was walking down to my seat, and this usher was like, come with me, come with me. They're kidnapping people. Come through this back entrance. And I was like, get away from me. I want to watch my movie. And I started to sit down in my seat, and I was taken. And I was kidnapped, full memories erased, mm. and I woke up a completely different person. And so... As I started to re think about it and, and try to figure out what does this mean, what is this, I was in the middle of working on this album. And I just connected my identity to so many people's identities who are being erased. Mm -hmm. This whole concept is pretty meta. You know, I wrote it, it's, you know, it's supposed to be fictitious, but look what's going on with Greg Abbott, with uh, Governor DeSantis. They are putting into law that you can't even talk about the LGBTQIA plus community in schools. There are schools and states that you can't talk about race in. The erasure of identity is happening right now, systemically. Like people are, are doing that to kids, to teenagers, and to families, and it's wrong. And I'm encouraging young people to read it, to find solace in it, to find hope and find strength, and those who are in a position of power to fight back against um, these folks who don't recognize us as complete human beings who deserve to feel seen, to feel heard. The book is such a uh, compliment to and a part of the activism that you've already been doing for, for a long time that's so central, I think, to your life. Um, is it nice to have the voice and the platform because of your talent, writing, <laughs> singing songs, that people will listen to you and people are going to go buy this book and that you can get that message out? I hope that people buy the book. You know, like, everybody may not necessarily love me, and that's fine. I come to, that's good. You know, one of the things that I wish I would have known uh, early in my career is that everybody won't love you and that's okay I love me and I love what it is that we're doing with this book and with the story since I was you know a child I'm timeless but I'll say since I was a child um, I was writing short stories I was writing science fiction short stories I had one where <laughs> uh, this alien came and was talking to a plant through photosynthesis and ended up taking my whole neighborhood and my grandmother <laughs> with them. How old them. were you when you wrote this? I Your kid? Shoot, yeah, I, yeah. I had to be in elementary wow. school. So the brain I was reading was a lot of R.L. Stein's Goosebumps yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I went on to write for the young playwrights, uh, the Coterie Theater, where we would write these short stories, and if they were good enough, the local actors would perform them. So I've always had a love of um, literature, of storytelling, and that's what I feel like my my thing is in music and fashion and art is like telling stories mm. right the bible tells stories you see how many people are obsessed with all of the stories in the bible you know that's how you keep the name of jesus alive and i'm just trying to do the lord's work nbc news streaming free now Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. This is a crazy 
critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You have been such an inspiration to so many people. The kind of people you write about in this book to black and queer people in this country. Mm -hmm. um, was that a difficult decision for you to step out front and say, this is exactly who I am, mm. take me or leave me, <laughs> and to, have, to, to put that out there, or were you completely comfortable with that? The thing about who I am is we change. This version, I think being a human is performative. I'm performing a version of who I think Janelle Monae should be. Mm. Every day I wake up and I'm making choices about how I move, what I do, based on the feedback that I got about who I should be. Mm. I don't represent everybody. You know, I can only speak from my truth where I'm at at that time, right? And if it resonates, if it connects, I'm always like, yay. But um, a lot of me talking out loud to the world is really for myself. Like, I need to say it. Because in my head, I probably said mean things about myself based on what the world tells me I should be and, you know, my own things that I probably have had to heal through, which I have. Um, but it's so much negative talk that it's like, you kind of overcompensate. You're like, I'm here. I'm right here. I'm present. This is who the I am, you know? Um, so that's always really good to get that out. Yeah. And we were talking before we started here just about getting to a place, and you touched on it a minute ago, in your life, in your career, mm -hmm. where you can just say it. Be yeah. who you are and not worry about how people exactly. are going to react to it. That's got to yeah. feel great you can't to be care. where you are. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. You, I, I think I cared like a good, even if it was 5%. Those are the moments that I'm most disappointed. I'm like, why did you care about that? Why did you allow that to steal your moment? But I mean, I'm like, I'm floating right now. I'm in the most carefree, I don't have anything to prove space that I've ever been in as an artist. And you can feel it in my music, my conversations. And it's so honest to just like, yeah, I'm like, man, why wasn't I this present? I spent so much time in the future and worried and, anxiety and all of those things but this is it this is the trip you know this is the 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 the, the gold this is where i should have been and now i'm doing everything i can to like stay present i feel like i'm on my second earth life oh yeah and that started recently yeah because there's life when you haven't healed like you live that life mm. but like after you've healed that's a whole nother life mm. You know, it's like you have a clear, you have a clear vision, and that's where I am right now. It's got to feel great. I mean, there are so many people who will listen to that and say, okay, it's easy for Janelle Monae to say that. Mm -hmm. She's achieved this level of success. How do I get to that place mm. in my daily life where I'm not worried about what people think about me? How do I get to that second life that you're talking about? What would you say to fans of yours who say, I want to be like her? I think... I wasn't trusting my own voice. Hmm. That's what I think was happening. Like, how are you gonna let somebody tell you who you are more than you telling yourself who you are? Like, I know myself. I know my truth. Like, and I think that's where it comes from. You start thinking that somebody else has the answer or the formula. Like, people can give you advice. People can say, oh, but when I get a gift, an idea, that's between me and the creator. It wasn't a big mass email sent out. Everybody, here is what Janelle needs to do. What do you guys think? Like, they wasn't involved on the deal, on the front end. So why am I doing that? Mm -hmm. And then I think when I think about, yeah, so trust your own voice over that. Yeah. It, it, like, period. You gotta get to a point where you trust you more than you trust them. And another thing I thought about, I was like, you know, the world judges us for whatever reason. There's always gonna be somebody playing that role of the judger, yep. right? 
why do I need to pile on and judge myself? That position is already taken. Go do something else. So that's how I kind of look at that too. That's so so well said. Have you always had that level of um, confidence and self-assured view of your own life going back to Kansas City when you were a kid and performing and all those things that does take some confidence for a child have you always felt this way a little bit I did yeah I was very confident as a child but then I lost it because hmm. then you know too much when you start to get into middle school and high school you get feedback on what they what what the culture thinks is cool and if you're not the club you know you start second guessing yourself but I'm back to it I'm back to my child spirit you know that didn't that just wasn't concerned about what was to the left or to the right. It was always forward. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening. Now, look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Your mother was a custodian, yeah. father a sanitation worker. Where did performance come in your life? Do you read anything into how that was born for you? Well, my dad also um, was a uh, musician and performer, and so I grew up in a house where, if when I went to my grandmother's house, she was playing the organ, singing in church. My other grandmother was playing the piano, doing piano lessons, singing in church. So I never had a family that told me that I couldn't do this. Like they always encouraged it, you know. And I'm thankful for that because those are your that's your first tribe, that's your first like fan, you know. They tell you, they let you know if it's good or not. I mean, even my, but my little sister would always be like, shut up, <laughs> be quiet, ugh. And that would just make me want to, you know, do it, do it more. Of course, of course. And then eventually you end up here yes. in New York for a little bit. You're so talented. You get the scholarship to come here. What was that like to go from Kansas City to turn up in New York City? It was a culture shock. Yeah. I went from like all black school, high school, minority school to being like the only black person in my class here. And then it was like this big city. I commuted 40 blocks every single day or I lived on 140th in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. So I went to 72nd Street every day. I shared a bed in a room with my cousin. Um, yeah, I was, I was struggling, but it, made, it just made me so much stronger. And it also told me what I didn't want to do. Right. I thought I wanted to do Broadway, and I'll probably end up doing it kind of on my own terms. I wanted to write something. I didn't want to do anything that anybody else had written because I wasn't really inspired by what I was seeing for black performers, the leading roles. It was kind of like the options were slim. So I moved to Atlanta, and that's uh, where I really started my own Wonderland Art Society Arts Collective, where I met other people that looked like me, that 
really had ideas like I had and also were teaching me things and we just were like, let's just do this independently. Mm. Let's write, let's direct, let's uh, act, let's like become the you print, not the blueprint. Mm. And so that's what I've been trying to do ever since. I don't know how I'm doing, but. You're doing pretty well. I mean, you, you go to Atlanta, big boy sees you on stage. Yeah. What I love about that part of the story is you say, they didn't try to make you into this mm -hmm. marketing object or to, to make, they allowed you to be who you are, yeah. which you've continued to be. Was there ever pressure along your rise to be someone else? Say, oh, you should maybe dress this way or make songs for the radio and all that. And if so, yeah. how did you ignore that of talk? Of course, everybody thinks they're smart. <laughs> everybody, and some people have really great ideas. But I mean, I just trusted me. I knew, I knew I was like, no, this is, there's a different way. And I think I had some meetings where I got told no. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay. Well, if I'm gonna walk in a room, I at least wanna be told no because I was being my authentic self. I don't wanna be in the room because of somebody else saying, do this, do that, do that. The other flip side of that though, is I think that it also made me feel like I had to prove something. Mm -hmm. I had to prove that, oh, I can talk about science fiction in my songs, I can dress like this, I can, just because I'm black, like I don't have to just sing that type of music, I'm gonna be eclectic and da 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 da. And, um, that was important because I felt like it was a cultural reset when I came out. A cultural reset. And people needed to see that particular image. I think now when I look back, I'm like, man, I could have put my sword down. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to fight. I didn't have to spend so much of my career just fighting that I'm just gonna prove, I gotta prove this and prove that I can be successful in this way. And I have to do, you know, I can't, like I was limiting myself, even as like eclectic and if you listen to my albums and concepts, all of that, there were still moments where I didn't give myself permission to have fun hmm. because I felt like I needed to be serious and mm, just militant in a sense. And I'm just, I already went through like the anger of feeling like, man, I missed so many moments where I could have been having fun. So now this part of my life is gonna be having fun. Something giving you just, myself permission. Something you just said just like, caught my ear. You said it was a cultural reset. Kind yeah. of when you came on the scene. What yeah. do you mean by that? I'm kind of doing this sort of retrospective on when I had first come out, but I think it was like, oh, it's a glitch in the matrix. It's something new on the scene that doesn't look or feel or sound like anything. Yeah, they're, they may be inspired by it, but the way that they are using their energy is just different. And now, you know, everything will be different. Mm. And the people who inspired you, it seems to me, have that same energy. Is that fair to say? Prince, Stevie Wonder, Lauren Hill, there's a long list of Ooh, people I who love are, all of them. right? They're kind of like you in that they didn't go with the grain. They brought something else. Is that why you were latched on to artists like those? Yeah, I mean, I, lo I used to be obsessed with Lauryn Hill. I totally. mean, but I knew I couldn't be her. Like, it's only one Lauryn Hill. So I had to figure out how to be the best Janelle Monae. You know, how, how could I, um, what, was my, what, what was the thing that I was going to uh, be bringing new? You know, I always want to come, like, what am I adding to our culture? What am I adding to the industry? What am I adding? What am I saying? Mm. So that was cool, but I mean, Prince and Stevie are just like mm. incredible humans. They never let their mystery or who they were, like the giants that they are musically, get in the way of their mentorship. And mm. I, I'm so thankful that early on in my career, I've been able to have them you know, in my life and as people I can talk to. And isn't it crazy? I've talked to other artists and actors about this. You look up to someone as a kid when you're coming up, but really Prince or Stevie Wonder live in some other stratosphere in your mind. And then all of a sudden you're working with them and they're yeah. giving you advice on your album. Yeah. Is that a wild thing to make that leap into their world? Very. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But then you look at them, you say, these are, these are people who, like myself, you know, just had a light, had something they wanted to say and an idea and you know maybe they it took some time and maybe home life wasn't perfect and um 
they just trusted their gut throughout those moments and they were anchored in knowing that it's much bigger than you mm. or me. And that's what I always, I feel most alone when I disconnect from everybody and I'm like, I'm over here, but I'm one with everything. You know, I'm one with everything and I think that they serve as a reminder and that music serves as a reminder that when we come together, when we can be on the same like frequency, that's when you feel close to God. That's when you feel the universe. That's when, yeah, I just feel like I'm a fabric in a larger quilt. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Something I've heard you say that really moved me, which is why you said you wear a tuxedo often, mm -hmm. which has become kind of a uniform for you. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, tied back to your childhood, right? Yeah. To your parents wearing uniforms. Working would, class, yeah. Yeah, what does that tuxedo mean to you in that context? Yeah, when I put it on, I always think about my family. You know, my mom used to serve at banquets. She was a janitor. My dad, you know, a trash man. My grandmother cooked food for the county jail for 25 years. So I come from a hard working class family. I think that's why I'm big on community. I have 49 first cousins. All my aunts and uncles working class, like they work their ass off to make sure that their, ne their kids, my cousins, all of us could have beautiful summers and picnics and um, we could go to amusement parks and all of that. So for me, I try to honor that in my work, you know, as much as I can. That's why this book, I wanted to bring a community of people, of writers with me. I could have done a memoir, a coffee table book, but this was better, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just instilled in me. It's like a gift and a curse in a sense, because you can work, 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 and you don't play, play, play. Like, I'm on that. I've worked <laughs> for a very long time, yeah. and I was super serious. I, now I'm like, if we're not talking about vacation, I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk. Like, we are supposed to be having the best Earth experience of our lives right now. You know, why are we getting caught up in a rat race? Yes, mm. we have to work. We need to survive. We need to do all these things. We also need to make time to f*** around. Amen to that. Before I let you go, I have to ask you how the film roles fit into this puzzle. But we look at Moonlight and Hidden Figures and Knives Out 2, very yes. excited that you're gonna be in that. How do you view acting in this, this picture of your career, this quilt? I love getting into different characters. I told you, the human experience is performative. One time it freaked me out when I thought about it. I was like, this is one big play. We have reoccurring characters, some people in and out of our lives, some same archetypes come back. But I love acting, I love um, exploring the human condition. My hope is that we can turn some of these short stories into TV or film projects. That, that would be cool. I would love that, and we're in talks. I was gonna say, this feels like a series to me. 
It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Let's make that happen. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you for having me. It's a pleasure talking it's to you. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much. What is happening, people? We got a great pop star plus for you today. On the show, we've got This Is Us on the mind with just two episodes left. Two of its stars stopped by, so of course we had to ask them all about the beloved show's final ending. We also spoke with Griffin Dunn, who plays Uncle Nicky, about what it was like filming the series finale. Later, we're also remembering Bob Saget on what would have been his 66th birthday. But first, here are today's pop star headlines. Bridgerton, oh, that is yeah, first up. Lady Whistledown yes. has got some very yes. big news for season three of the Netflix hit series that everybody yes. has seen except me. According to the gossip columnist's latest announcement, the next chapter is going to focus on the relationship between Colin Bridgerton and Penelope Featherington, yes. a.k.a. So. Lady Whistledown herself. Spoiler alert! If Why haven't you seen it? I haven't seen it. I didn't say anything. I didn't even watch this she show. Said. She said. I don't, how do I know if I've spoiled anything? I don't <laughs> even. Let me just read the teleprompter. Not Everybody's name it. Right. Don't say After series star Nicola Coughlin teased in uh, news at an industry panel over the weekend, Netflix fans, they, they the fans sent Netflix, uh, the fans of the show, into a frenzy. Here's what they tweeted. Season three is going to reveal how or if Penelope and Colin go from friends to lovers. Oh. How or if? Nothing's been said. No. The most recent season of Shonda Rhimes' period drama just premiered back in March with a record-breaking number of viewers for Netflix. No word yet on whether the third chapter is said. Do you said know what you're saying? Well, no. Not, no, 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 I think no, 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 That's a word salad. Like, just for preparation for your job. I think, your, your I, think job. I just blocked off the last three minutes. Yeah. I'm I don't right know anything. You. Do you know? No, no idea. No, no idea. No. Do you know any of those names? No. Uh, no. Lady no. whistle down. Yeah, just make it sound British by putting ton at the end of it. Yeah, you're, you're, no you're, idea. You're Carson Dalyton. But you sold it well. Featherington? Yes. Yeah, that's just a made-up word. Yeah, nobody. All right. This I know something about. Harry Styles. Yeah. As the music super Superstar prepares to release his next album, Harry's House. He's also making time for life outside of work. In a recent conversation with Apple Music Zane Lowe, Harry opening up about not just juggling new music, but also touring and a little bit about his personal life as well. Take a second to like invest some more time into like balancing my life out a little bit. Like this working is not everything about who I am. Like it's something I do. And I don't want to be defined as a person necessarily by like what I do all the time. I want to be able to kind of put that down. And for a really long time, I didn't really know who I was if I didn't do this. And that's really scary. I would have had to stop that interview and put a little more light on Harry. <laughs> he's just a little that's more that's uplight, a little more down that's light. That's you gotta that's light that man up. He's going deep. He's, he's got his own light. Yeah. Yeah. He has his own light. Yeah, the light is perfect here for months. On Thursday, Harry, you're gonna be lit perfectly. That is a fact. <laughs> Harry's gonna join us on the plaza this Thursday. If you know me or live near me, yeah. please stop asking stop. me. Yeah. Just stop. Everyone. Stop. It's over. That, that's, I'm saying that to my own family members, so more than anything. People you haven't heard from in years. Yeah. I'm about to oh, go yeah. into a hotel until this thing's over. I know. Yeah. I get knocks at the door. It's crazy how many people want to come to this. We don't blame them. Yeah. This is going to be great. So Next up, Pete Davidson and Edie Falco, the two stars, are teaming up for a new comedy series based on Pete Davidson's life at yesterday's NBC Upfronts. The pair announcing that Falco is going to play Pete's mom in Buckus, a show to... It's a show set to tell dramatized versions of Pete's real life experiences, something that he also did in the 2020 movie, The King of Staten Island. The SNL actor is going to write and executive produce the project. The new gig is extra special for Pete, who also happens to be a Soprano super fan, even spotted with a bada bing tattoo somewhere on his body that we can't show you right now. Whoa. Bub Kiss is going to stream on Peacock. And next up, another all-star duo in casting, Brian Cranston and Annette Benning. The two are raking in the dough in the first trailer for Jerry and Marge Go Large, based on a true story. The movie follows one couple who discovers a loophole in the Massachusetts State Lottery and ends up winning millions with hopes of reviving their small Michigan town. I'm playing the lottery and I won $15,000. Why didn't you just tell me? We barely have enough money to retire on. This is no time to risk it. Yes, it is. What? Can I help you? We'd like to buy 8,000 windfall tickets. I'm gonna help you first. $312,000. <gasps> what now? We wanna start a corporation. We'll split the profits with the whole town. I'm saying that. 
I mean, you're yeah, already in, right? So good. I'm in. So good. Yeah. It takes yeah. 10 seconds for you to go, okay, I'm going to watch yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, Jerry and Marge go large. And it's a true story. Oh. Uh, set to start streaming next month yeah, on Paramount be. Plus, and we'll all be there watching. Yeah. Finally, Steph Curry, the basketball superstar, officially a college graduate on Sunday. Steph earned his Bachelor's of Arts degree from Sociology from Davidson College only 13 years after he left for the NBA. School said that Curry re-enrolled for the spring semester to finish his courses. And although the baller didn't want to, or didn't, not that he didn't want to, but he didn't walk the commencement, he did celebrate the achievement on social media. He wrote, dream come true. Class of 2010, AKA 2022, <laughs> but we got it done. Made the promise when I left and had to see it through. Mama, we made it. Oh. So congrats to Steph and all the graduates on their major milestone. <laughs> and now the reason we call the show Popstar Plus, we got a few more headlines for you. First up, our favorites, Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey. They are so funny together. They stopped by Studio 1A uh, this morning, the office ladies visiting the set, by the way, before they came to see us, they were on Seth Meyers, where not only there did they talk about their new book, but also they showed off some creative new dance moves. That Jenna and I made up a dance where we um, filed papers in the cabinet. We're gonna show, yeah. let's do it. We okay. did oh, this. this is we, great. Right? Yeah. Okay. Ready, Ann? Okay, we get. Oh, 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 my God! it. Okay, very good. I'm sure filing papers is going to take off on TikTok any second right now. Those two are so funny together. They have a podcast, just genius. They're real-life best friends. Anyway, one more story for you. We'll talk about Ellen DeGeneres here and Kate McKinnon, because the hits keep on coming as the longtime host approaches the final weeks of her talk show. On Monday's episode, the SNL cast member and famous Ellen impersonator, that is Kate, stopped by and shared a poignant, of course, hilarious, imagined letter that she would have written to Ellen when she was just 13. Dear Mrs. DeGeneres, <laughs> My name is Kate, I'm from Long Island. It's come to my attention that I am gay as hell. <laughs> no one else is gay for 200,000 miles. So it's nice to know that you exist. I bet if I ever met you, I would act so weird. So I hope I never do. <laughs> Thank you for being so funny and such an inspiration and making me feel less alone. P.S. My iguana isn't eating, what do I do? <laughs> Very funny. Ellen's last show, by the way, if you want to mark it on the calendar, that's scheduled for next Thursday, May 26th. And there you have it. That's all you need to know from us today. Still to come, we've got a lot more show. Get the tissues handy because two of This Is Us stars are going to prepare us for the beloved show's final episodes. Stay with us. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. We've been talking about it for a long time around here, but we care. This Is Us is coming to an end, and a few of the stars of the show stop by to get us ready for the finale. Since its premiere back in 2016, the world has fallen madly in love with the Pearson family on NBC's hit show, This Is Us. And now, six seasons... 38 Emmy nominations later, it is almost time to say goodbye. We've got two episodes left. Two of the show yes. stars are with us. But before we chat, here's a sneak peek at tomorrow night's episode. Excuse me. 
I know we wanted her to rest, but Rebecca's blood pressure's dropping and her legs are starting to go cold. Things are happening quickly now. I don't see her making it through the night. I think it's time to start saying goodbyes. Don't make us start saying goodbye. It's time to say good morning to This Is Us stars Susan Kelechi Watson and John Puertas. Guys, this is the end of such a huge chapter, I think, in American culture. No shows have been able to capture the world kind of the way This Is Us has, especially in this time where you can get shows everywhere. Did you ever put your finger, Susan, on what you think the magic of this show has been? You know what, I think so. After six years, I feel like I can say the magic really was the vision of, of yeah. Dan Fogelman. Yeah. It was that writer's room with the, the authenticity and the love that they approached every script. And then it was this amazing cast that I got to work with. I yeah. feel like, John, the love was real. I mean, we know it's real on screen yeah, when we absolutely. watch you guys, but I, every time I've had a chance to sit with you guys, the love seems to be real off as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we're a family. And, uh, and, and that goes all the way, like she said, into the writer's room and our crew. Uh, we're, we've become a big family. When we say this is us, it's not just uh, just us, the cast you yeah. see, but we, we include the audience in that. When we yeah. say this is us, and we hope that they see themselves and everything that every script that we write or that the writers write. Mm -hmm. um, and she <laughs> is a writer now on the yeah. show <laughs> that uh, we wrote. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. you know, they put every writer puts a little piece of themselves in whatever script they're that's working on, true. and I think that's what people can can find in our in our show is that mm -hmm. they can find a piece of themselves, a piece of their family, mm -hmm. a piece of, of their extended families. I was thinking as this was wrapping up, I always remember all the graduations I've ever been through in my life, like high school graduation, college graduation, mm -hmm. and that feeling that you have at the end. Yeah. You're happy that you've reached this milestone, but it's so difficult. Shooting your last scene, oh, Susan, boy. Please, tell, talk about it. please tell me what, <laughs> what that was like for you. Uh, I was, first of all, I just knew, I was like, oh God, if I just don't become a puddle on the floor, I'll be okay. Yeah. But it surprised me because I knew that day was there, but I didn't know which scene it would be. And then we shot a scene and then all of a sudden the cameras just swung around on me. And they, somebody, uh, Glenn, one of our 80s announced that this was my last rap. And he just kind of said, you know, it's my honor to say that this is Susan Kelechi Watson's last series rap. And it was just like, bam, oh. and it, it was there all of a sudden. And it was, it was emotional. And, and they asked us to say something so we can kind of like, I have that as like a part of our archive and stuff. And it was like, it was really mm. moving to be able to say how much I appreciated everybody and how much it was a gift to me to be a part of it. Well, y'all have been a gift to us. I want to go out with the, you guys, your viral dancing video. I think oh. it's the wobble. <laughs> Do we have the wobble? Sure. It's so good. Or it's me I know. And John. Okay, the, oh, wait, come months. on, hold on. <laughs> oh, it's the wobble. Wait, can you crank it up? <laughs> I don't think I can hear it. But anyway, the wobble rocks it. Okay. There you go. Can't have a wedding without a wobble. Well, you guys, you guys, you made our lives so much better. We're happy to see a couple more episodes. Thank you. Oh. Um, and we can't wait to see what's next for both of you. Thank awesome. you all for coming to see us. Coming up next, another member of the This Is Us cast weighs in as the show wraps up, sharing what it was like to be on the set during filming for the final episodes. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? 
Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Come on. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Look who's back together. Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. As the finale of This Is Us approaches, we chatted with Griffin Dunn. He plays Uncle Nicky on the show, and he told us why some of the best times on set included his co-star, Justin Hartley. For 50 years, I lived in a trailer. A trailer that went nowhere. Whatever the opposite is of an astronaut, that, that's... That's what I became. I didn't know I wanted to join the cast of This Is Us until um, I got a call asking to uh, be a part of the cast. I'd followed the show and I was always a fan and, and the call just came out of the blue. And the part of Uncle Nicky was described to me and a character would bring lots of complicated emotions and, 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 and problems like PTSD and alcoholism and diabetes. And, uh, he sounded like a great, complicated, um, tragic character who would probably transform into something else over the course of the show, as, as all the other characters do. I, I was in, in for the, from the get-go. Every day, same routine, 50 years. But then, I got an invitation to meet you two. And you know, you know what it got me thinking about? It got me thinking about the moon. My favorite um, scene to play uh, was with, um, was talking to the twins. Um, that just hit me very personally about um, him uh, speaking to those uh, sleeping infants. Anything anything good that would ever happen to me. It just seemed, it just seemed impossible. But here I am. I made it. You two. You two are my moon. When I found out uh, Edie was Nikki's love interest, well, I was completely surprised. I probably, like the audience, um, thought it would be um, um, the, the woman I've been pining for for the past 40 so years. Um, and just assumed, I underestimated um, the, the writers again, just thinking predictably. Um, so when uh, I got to the scene of him um, giving sass to, uh, to Edie in the airplane, um, I, I, I just smiled. It was so rewarding as a reader to see that happen. Well, I'm glad that I brought my duct tape. Seat up. Now? Please. Sure. All you had to do was ask. I, I think the most challenging parts, uh, parts of playing um, Uncle Nicky, um, has been to walk the line between being um, an unsentimental person uh, and, uh, and, a, and a certain kind of inner bitterness he fights within himself and to also be funny. Um, you know, it's always been a, a balance of, of, of tragic and then comic and tragic and comic. The funniest times I've had on set, both on camera and between takes it has been with Justin. We just have a, you know, a really great rapport and make each other laugh. We don't fall into, uh, you know, the, the uh, a, a typical sentimentality, you know, our, our sort of edge toward each other, I think plays against that. So so it's been really rewarding to, to, uh, to have so many scenes with Justin. Uh, doing the wobble with the cast. Yeah, I think that's uh, something that Sterling and John do, and they they came up with it, and 
to, to just sort of put it together between takes, and I guess to certainly put it online. I think a lot of people thought it was like a dance sequence at the wedding, um, but it was just all of us, you know, um, doing the wobble um, during our lunch break. You don't just get better. And if you think I'm exaggerating, let me remind you that your father drank in secret trying to forget. Let me remind you, when you busted into my trailer, there was a gun sitting in front of me. That was 50 years after Boots left Vietnam. I've heard from Vietnam vets, and I've heard from um, uh, soldiers and their families who uh, have fought in our more recent conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, I, that they are, you know, thankful to see their their trauma, uh, post-war trauma portrayed, you know, is, is uh, very meaningful to me. And I feel very proud of that. I was very satisfied with how they wrapped up the story. His part was sort of put to rest and, and we knew he'd be okay. And from then on, I was just like a, uh, Nikki and Edie uh, were suddenly a team and we're just like a kind of fun-loving, um, smart-ass couple. Um, you know, involved in all the family proceedings that would be uh, coming ahead. Filming the final episodes was, was very emotional. All the principals um, gave like a, you know, gave a very moving um, speech of thanks. And, uh, and it was, everybody was very moved. Um, a lot of tears were going around. That kind of like, it's all coming to an end sort of feeling. And you, you feel a certain gratitude, you know, that um, for having had this experience. And it makes you just want to hug a lot of people. Appreciate Griffin swinging by and sharing all that good stuff with us. As a reminder, in case you didn't know already, this is us airs tonight on NBC. And that series finale is one week away. Still to come, we're going to share Uncle Al's visit with the great Bob Saget on what would have been Bob's 66th birthday. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. What comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. The world still in shock over the sudden death of Bob Saget, who passed away unexpectedly in January. Today would have been his 66th birthday. So in honor of Bob's humor and charm, we thought we'd share some of Al's cold cuts visit with the star back in 2019. You've been dating for two, two decades and now you get married. What? what, what yes, what? I was divorced 23 years ago mm -hmm. from a very nice person and she's a great baby mama. And, uh, and we, are, we talk constantly and my kids are my dreams. And... Uh, and I meet this woman three years ago, and um, she's really wonderful, mm -hmm. and I love her. And she's not here right now because she's relaxing. Good. And you could, if you wanted to, could have processed meat. I could have eaten that whole plate Could have right taken now. that thing down. I would have guzzled it. You could have done it in fast motion. I would have eaten all of it. The cameras are off. Let's just do no, it. Do you have a port <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Oh, John Stamos recently became a dad. Have you, I mean, you're, you're a dad. Have you shared any... 
any advice? I have. I said, let let her do the breastfeeding. I said that. It said because he he's tempted. He's very strange, <laughs> but uh, his kid is so cute. It's insane. Little Billy, and he is the cutest kid you ever saw. And he's always wanted to be a father. Uh. And being friends with him for thirty years, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And his wife Caitlin is just a doll, and she and my wife Kelly get along well. Do you keep in touch with any of the? Well, I mean, you've got the folks that you see on a regular basis. What about the? Everybody else about the Olsen twins. Who, 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 I, I actually, um, I'm here for a while in New York. I'm uh -huh. doing a lot of uh, stand-up and, and promoting. And so, yes, I, I'm, I'm going to see them. I, uh, oh. I have to see them. I love them a lot. So I, I keep in touch literally with every person. That's terrific. On the show. Except, like, guest stars from, you mm -hmm. know, 1990. Uh, what's what, your favorite cheese? That's what I did that for. You did, I would, thank you. There is a cheese that I love, and it is Jarlsberg. Jarlsberg. And, uh, do you have the Jarlsberg? We have the Jarlsberg. I believe this is the Jarlsberg right here. This is an amazing cheese because it's skim milk cheese. Mm -hmm. And now we have a lot of cheese on the sandwich. Right. So I would, I'm going to actually remove... Too much cheese. I believe there can be too much cheese, as you've seen from my comedy. <laughs> What I would do is, is roast some peppers. Can okay, we, the roasting can we, peppers. Let's, can we do that? Sure, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to actually take this. And, and these are great because this stuff is uh, pre-roasted. Yes. But I want to heat it up. Heat it up. Give it some heat. I'm going to throw one more on there because what I'll do is it's going to melt the cheese, which is much better than cutting the cheese. <laughs> Why do you think you've had such longevity uh, in, in this business? Um, I have been a workaholic since I was a little kid. I was not good in school. I played around too much. I wanted to make people laugh. But I have always constantly worked, mm -hmm. no matter what. I worked in While I'm working in a deli, I'm doing improv at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm making films at Temple University. And then when I went to L.A., I wanted to learn acting. So I went to acting school for five years while I would be doing stand-up. And, and then constantly trying to make movies, always trying to do that. And so I think that's my, my secret is I just mm -hmm. work really hard. I work as hard as I can. And I'm not real, I'm not that smart. Um, I don't retain that much stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I know, I have a good people sense, I think. What do you tell young kids who come up to you and say, hey, Mr. Sager, what would... What's, it's five dollars. What, what's the secret me. sauce? Yeah, what do you... <laughs> don't bother me, kid. <laughs> I tell them that to, if they really love something, to do it. Don't do it to be famous and and find something that you really love, like everybody does. And don't think you can't make it. I just ran into Tiffany Haddish at a uh, at a party at my friend Jeff Ross's house. And I met her when she was 15. And, and there was something at the uh, comedy club called the Laugh Factory in uh, Los Angeles called Comedy Camp. And we would, um, they'd have comedians come in and I would come in like on once a month on Saturdays and teach kids that came from nothing, that were from, that had, she lived in her car. I met her when she was 15 years old. So I knew her for about three years and she was like, Bob, I want to make it like Richard Pryor. I said, just do it. And I hadn't seen her for a couple of years and I saw her last weekend and I just hugged her and I started crying. And she did too. We, she, You're going to start me crying. but. I was so happy for her, and because it is the old saying, when you mm -hmm. see people get up at the Oscars and go, you can make it, you can come from nothing, you can do this, it sounds so cliche because we hear it all the time. Yeah. It's not cliche, it's not to be taken lightly. People come from nothing. And, and that's the thing, is don't do it to be famous, but if it motivates you a little bit, I mean, she wanted to be famous, but she above all wanted to be funny. Yeah, and she and, is. And she is. Wow. So no. we can top it off. While we're topping this off, uh, top top three full house moments. Um, well, um, I, I would have to say that you know, sitting down and talking to those kids. This is going to melt that cheese perfect, oh, by man. the way. Oh. Sitting down and talking to the kids on the show and giving little morality plays. You know, of you know, you can't bring a horse into the house. You can't drive a car through the window. But no, really, just. <laughs> teaching them basics of, of things that you should and shouldn't do was something that was meaningful to me. I, mm -hmm. I put my heart into being a good dad. And at the time when I did Full House and Candace was nine and, or 10 and Jody was seven and, and Ashley and Mary Kate were born, I met them when they were nine months old. I diapered them, I changed their diapers. And of course, we are thinking of Bob's family and friends today. 
And um, man, do we miss him. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Popstar Plus, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. As always, we'll be here tomorrow. So join us. See you soon. Hello, friends watching Today All Day. It's our favorite day of the oh, week, and yours too, Friday. We made it. Welcome to Today in 30. We got a quick roundup of everything you may have missed from this morning's show. Can you tell that we are still over the moon when it comes to that Harry Styles guy? Remember him? In a bit, we are going to reveal our full summer concert lineup. Plus, a story that only Harry Smith can tell. He will introduce us to a young woman whose own struggle with hearing loss inspired her to become a doctor. And she's on a mission now to help children and adults just like herself. It's a really cool story. All that plus our friends on the third hour made their way to Hilton Head, South Carolina. They're going to have some fun in the sun. See what happened when they shared an adventure out on the open water. And from Hoda and Jenna, I I understand you ladies shared the incredible family story behind a popular whiskey. Whiskey that tastes like peanut butter. What? No, I'm not kidding. I, I might even, actually like whiskey. That's exactly right. We actually sipped it and neither of us are whiskey drinkers. Yes. Creamy, delicious, and sweet. Do you put on toast or <laughs> cracker? No. no. Don't. Okay. Bye bye. Just... It's time to get started for Cheers. today in 30. 30. Add it all up and there are growing fears this country could be headed toward a recession or something even worse. Do you remember the term stagflation? Mm -hmm. We've got it all covered. We'll start with NBC's Tom Costello. Tom, hadn't heard that one since the 80s. Yes, yeah, 70s and 80s. Last time we heard about stagflation. Stagflation happens when the economy is stagnant, it stops growing, and yet inflation moves higher and unemployment moves higher. Some former Fed officials and top economists are warning right now stagflation is a possibility. Now, I'll tell you that the good news is the unemployment rate is very low, but we are facing a tsunami of economic challenges. This morning, America seems trapped in a vortex of bad economic news. Sky-high food prices, pump prices at record levels, soaring rents up 16% in one year, COVID lockdowns in China, the world's manufacturing center, choking the global supply chain, U.S. corporate profits sinking, Russian oil under partial embargo, Ukrainian wheat exports at a standstill, and all of it feeding 40-year high inflation that Americans are paying for every day. On the front lines, shippers and truck drivers with diesel fuel prices up 75% in one year. In Indiana, Shelly Conaway is a full-time truck driver who also runs a charity to rush supplies to those in need. We were looking at possibly buying trailers and a truck, another truck, but we won't be able to afford to put tires on it or put fuel in the tank. All of it sending the stock market lower. The S&P down 18% so far this year. The Nasdaq down a stunning 27%. Are we closer to a bottom in your mind? We are seeing some signs that we might be a near a bottom for some stocks. The last time the country faced so many economic challenges. If inflation this year does increase at the present rate, it will be 1980, when inflation hit 13.5 percent. Now the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates fast to get inflation under control. What we need to see is inflation coming down. In a, in a clear and convincing way. But analysts warn the economy could fall into recession. In Texas, paramedic Ted Rickard was hoping to take his twins on a camping trip back to Colorado this summer. But skyrocketing prices have forced him to cancel the trip. Instead, he's planning to stay close to home. The big eight days, you know, uh, you're talking like five, six tanks of gas at like 80 bucks a piece. So it's just just economically a non-starter. Yeah, a lot of families reconsidering their summer travel plans because of exploding prices for gas, airline tickets, hotels, restaurants, food. It could, in fact, alter the way that we go through the summer. Guys, back to you. All right, Tom Costello, thank you. Carson joins. We've got more on the celebrations for the Queen's Platinum mm -hmm. Jubilee just a couple weeks. Yes, we do. She's made several rare public appearances in recent weeks at events that, of course, mark that historic 70 years on the throne. And we're starting to learn more about what's to come, including a star-studded musical tribute. And NBC's Molly Hunter is right there at Windsor Castle. Hey, Molly, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. That's right. All eyes are on the Platinum Jubilee and we are getting more details about this huge public concert. Diana Ross, Elton John, and I'm told on very good authority that one of Savannah's favorites, Duran Duran, will also be there. 
morning, the royal celebration is on, with festivities for the Queen's Jubilee well underway. The stage is now set for a platinum party at the Palace. Buckingham Palace revealing a star-studded lineup for the Jubilee concert in June, one of the hallmark events to mark the Queen's historic 70 years on the throne. The night will feature many A-list acts, including the band Queen, Sir Elton John, Duran Duran, and Alicia Keys, with Diana Ross closing out the show. Ross is no stranger to royal performances, sharing her excitement on social media, writing, I am honored to perform for Her Majesty the Queen once again. While preparations for the massive celebration move full steam ahead, it's still unclear if the 96-year-old monarch will be in attendance. She's been battling mobility issues and has been deciding day to day which jubilee appearances she'll be making. But in recent weeks, the Queen has been back in the public eye. Where might I go? On Tuesday, she surprised commuters in style, visiting a London train station to mark the opening of a new rail line named in her honor. And just days earlier, the Queen was spotted at her first Jubilee event, the star-studded Royal Windsor Horse Show. The Queen walked with a cane to her seat in the Royal Box and was later greeted with a standing ovation from the packed crowd. Now, lots of speculation about that reunion with Harry and Meghan. And of course, the big question, will little Lilibet and Archie get to spend some quality time with their great-grandmother? I'll send it back to you guys. All right. All right. For us at Windsor Castle. Oh, thanks. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. good. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? are ready for something like this. Come on. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. Who comes back together? Oh, I'm you so happy. Me. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. of yesterday's incredible concert oh. from Harry Styles. What a great crowd. Okay, that concert, that was a great crowd. We have a great crowd today too, by the way. I mean, that was incredible yesterday. Yeah. We will never forget it, and guess what? It was the only the start. We've got more live music lined up. Who is coming this summer? Check it out. Can you feel it? The crowd is ready to get the party started. So the sounds of summer are calling you to the plaza. Live, where the hottest names in music will rock your world. There we go. It's the City Concert Series on today, featuring Lizzo. What's up, y'all? Let's go. All right. John Batiste. I need you, yeah, you, yeah, you. Conan Gray. Marin Morris, Romeo Santos, Mickey Guyton, this is for you, Jack Harlow, Brandy Carlisle, Walker Hayes, and Superstar Harry Styles kicked it all off. Feel the music, catch the magic. The epic party lasts all summer 
long. It's the City Concert Series, only on Today. Oh, that's a great list. There's definitely something for everybody there. A lot to look forward to, all the details. Make your plans to join us. Go to today.com slash concerts, and that's a fine list. Well, here's our morning boost, kiddos. Here we go. A baseball player's walk-up song as they head to the batter's box can tell you a lot about them, and so does the way they move to it, like this t-ball player with a big league attitude. Yeah. Okay, number six, look at him. He's oh feeling the music his mom posted the video, wrote it. fills my heart with so much joy that our son makes so many people so happy by just being Oh him. my gosh, it's every genre. Yeah. We started at hip-hop. Seriously. Then there was like a country, like... And by the know, way, if you're wondering he if he's it. a dancer, he's a dancer, and he's also a player. He look that. nailed that ball. He can back it up. Yeah, that was good. Oh, <laughs> real cool. That is awesome. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking down. Yeah. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. It is graduation season. Millions of young people eager to celebrate their hard-earned achievements. Mm -hmm. Our buddy Harry Smith is here with one story of a soon-to-be graduate whose journey has come full circle. Tell us more, Harry. You're going to love this. When Megan Westman was just a year and a half old, she became one of the youngest people in America to receive a cochlear implant for hearing loss. She goes off to, to college, goes to graduate school, not sure what she would do with her life until she realized one day she was ready to help children and adults just like herself. At the Stony Brook Audiology Research Center, Megan Westman adjusts the tuning of Andrea Orlando's new cochlear implant. Before the implant, Orlando could no longer hear the voices of his wife or his grandchildren. His hearing had all but vanished. But now, how's it going? It's going great. A lot different. I'm hearing sounds again for the first time. I can hear 100% better and only more to improve. Start to hear music again. Really? What are you going to listen to on the way home? Uh, I listen to, I like classic rock. <laughs> 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 Most patients don't want the stimulation too soon. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. The nerve can be really sensitive. For him, he was at the go, just ready to have that volume. So it was really exciting for all of us to see that success. Megan Westman gets it big time, for without her cochlear implant, she would not be able to hear at all. So when you're there and you're working with someone who has just gotten an implant and you tell them or they notice 
that you have an implant too. What does it mean to them? They light up and they they almost, it's like finding our own people. When you find somebody else who has the same story or a similar story, you kind of feel like you've already made a connection with a total stranger. Meningitis put Megan in intensive care when she was not yet two years old. That's when they ordered the auditory brainstem response testing and I had no response. I was profoundly deaf in both ears. She became one of the youngest cochlear implant recipients in the country. And while it helped her hear, it brought unwanted attention to her disability. I spent my, most of my life trying to hide it, pretend like it wasn't there, cover it up with my hair. Junior high was torturous. Were you bullied? I would say more indirectly. I don't think kids were mean as to say straight to my face. But there was also a social delay that comes with anybody with a disability, with a hearing loss especially. You're not picking up on conversations that are happening around you. What was it like then growing up with this? It's shaped me into who I am today. It's made me stronger and I wouldn't change anything. And especially now, feeling like I've found my purpose and what I'm going to do for my career, it, it was all worth it. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Christopher. We have all marveled at the videos of children who are implant recipients. Megan wants to be a symbol of assurance, especially for parents of those kids. I can see how much it means to them to see someone who has had a success story with an implant, and it kind of gives them a little hope that their children can have the same outcomes. In the final days of her training, Megan has been under the watchful eyes of audiologist Dr. Jamie Cluna. She truly will understand what, what they are going through. Um, we can read it in books and we can talk to our patients and hear about it, but to actually live it is a whole different story. It is amazing, after all. To be an audiologist requires very good hearing. Megan's got that and more. Hearing loss, cochlear implants, disabilities in general, nothing can hold you back. You can achieve anything you want if you put your mind to it. When you stay committed, dedicated, work hard, nothing can hold you back. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. All choked yes. up. She yes. gets her diploma, a doctor of audiology, <laughs> next week. Goes to work in an ENT practice in North Carolina. Beautiful. Next month. Beautiful hair. Oh, Beautiful story. story, as always. Tears in your eyes. Of eye. course, it's a hairy story. Of course, I do. <laughs>
did you grow up fishing these waters? I did. I did. Yes, sir. Yeah. Who's driving that boat over there? All right, everybody, wait. That's my dad, Fuzzy. He's been taking me out here since I was in a high chair. Fuzzy! Fuzzy! Let me tell you all a little bit what we catch down here, guys. So what, what we're doing right now is we're floating live shrimp under a popping court and kind of targeting redfish, flounder, and trout. And that's kind of what makes up the, the inshore, you know, species of, of the low country or even South Carolina. If we got to eat what we catch tonight for dinner, we're going to be hungry. <laughs> yeah. Woo! I think Craig needs to stick to being an anchor. I mean, Craig. <laughs> Finally, we got a bite. Oh, 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 but not before I took the helm. Hey, there's a dolphin right there if y'all want to get it on the show. Oh, my gosh. They come down here on porpoise. Ah. Oh, right there. Oh, that's a, that's a big one. Oh, this is the perfect way to cap off a, a fishing trip. I never thought we'd see dolphins out here. No, but you never thought Craig would catch a fish either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to charge y'all for a dolphin cruise. <laughs> Next, a celebration of drinks and dinner at the Quarter Deck Restaurant. Oh, that's good. Oh, my God. Wow. Ending with the 110-step climb up the iconic Harbor Town Lighthouse, worth every step. Well, Mr. Melvin, you have been absolutely correct in stating this is God's country. Well, I'm, I'm so happy three of my favorite people could come to one of my favorite places. Uh, this is the funny up ever. Way to go. Great. Oh my goodness, goodness. that was so much great. fun. The, the funny part was we were all ragging on Craig, you know, because <laughs> this is South Carolina, it's his home state, it's God's country. And you weren't catching a fish, and then all of a sudden, bam! And it was time to go. That's right. It, it was, was like incredible. the fish heard you guys talking to Oh, yeah. Right. And the fish wanted to like, The hand of God reached out and commanded one of his creatures, I want you to sacrifice <laughs> To Craig Melvin. And then Craig got on both of those dolphins and rolled them in. It was great. Just watching him. Oh, his hair grew. Just like Fabio on the beach. That was a lot of fun. That was great. Really was. That was great. Really you guys didn't know that we had dolphins here. No. no. We were shocked and, to see dolphins in a bay. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and by Drew? the way, yeah, he was terrific. Drew was fantastic. His dad, was Fuzzy, with met his mom. Our guy. And, the, and uh, Chef Ben at oh, the quarter deck. Oh, my God. That was some at, of the best uh, food I've ever had. Harbor Town. Fantastic. There we go. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. In less than two years, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey has sold an impressive wow. one million cases, and it's gained a lot of celebrity fans. Yeah, but it's the story behind the brand that's really impressive. Donna recently caught up with the company's co-founder, Steve Yang, in San Diego for her series, up next. Oh, cool. uh, hi, hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. I'm so excited to share this story. May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and Steve's story is really remarkable. It crosses multiple generations, highlighting a parent's love and how one family overcame the darkest of times. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Hit me with the screwball. <laughs> Cheers! A shot of whiskey is usually the sign of a good time. 
But for Stephen Yang and his family, this drink represents so much more. Nowhere else in the in any other country would be a Cambodian refugee, a mom with a chemistry background and a law degree, create a peanut butter whiskey and became the most successful launch super premium liquor in history. We are ultimately the American dream. Stephen is the co-founder of the popular Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, and his story of success began more than 8,000 miles from his home in San Diego to a childhood marked by tragedy in Cambodia. There was a whole genocide that happened from 74 to 79. I caught polio when I was one years old. And so my parents decided to drop everything and decide to leave Cambodia and go into a refugee camp. And that journey was extremely difficult. My mom was pregnant with my little brother at the time when we were crossing the landmine borders. The Yang family endured the dangerous journey and sought safety in a refugee camp in Thailand where they stayed for six years. You describe your parents as being so optimistic, but the most optimistic person in that situation, I'm sure, feels beaten down, what kept you going? A parent's love for their child. They truly believe they could get me medical help. And what was your physical state like at this time? After a couple years or so, I, I couldn't walk anymore because my leg, uh, my muscle didn't develop anymore. And so how I really get by is just two sandals on my feet and two sandals on my hand and just crawl. Wow. <laughs> That's really tough. In 1992, the Yang's hopes were answered when they got sponsored to move to California, where Stephen was able to receive the medical care he needed. We were all skin and bone, didn't speak any English. We would always get basket food all the time, and it would be some fruits, bread, and then peanut butter. That was my first basket I ever had, was peanut butter. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? So <laughs> for me, peanut butter was a taste of freedom. Fast forward to 2006, Stephen opened OB Noodle House with his brothers Scott and Kyle. There, he let his love for peanut butter run wild. I put peanut butter in everything. Peanut butter in wings and fried rice. And then I started putting peanut butter with Jameson. That tastes like peanut butter. We turned that into screwball peanut butter whiskey. His wife, Brittany, figured out how to make it work. So she's the brain in all this. She's able to use her chemistry background to formulate the brand and also really create everything from the bottle and just look at all the contracts. Without my wife, there would be no screwball. The brand struggled to find bottlers, distributors, and investors. Ultimately, Stephen and Brittany financed the company themselves. How did you continuously believe in yourself when there were so many external factors that were consistently breaking you down? How we believe in is what my parents taught us also. We now have a child. We're thinking of setting a better future for our daughter. So that was the strength that got us going. Since we launched, we we're the fastest to a million flat cases for a premium brand. America right. loves a good drink. <laughs> yes, God bless America. Since its launch in 2018, the drink has exploded in popularity, even gaining celebrity fans like Questlove and Dave Grohl. And with its success, Stephen is committed to giving back. I was on the opposite side, and now it's just coming back full circle. Most recently, providing aid for Ukrainian refugees in Poland and donating $100,000 to orphanage renovations all part of the brand's mission to spread kindness to those in need. I believe we could achieve progress by working together. Take this single chopsticks right here. When you're single, it's easily broken. But if we come together and work together, we are reinforce and support each other. We will thrive if we work together. Isn't his story wow. remarkable? Oh and it really, the optimism that carried each generation through and mm -hmm. the success to see they have now, it was amazing to feel and see the stark contrast between his past and present. Wow. And so, you know, I'm normally the friend who makes everyone take, take a shot. I remember Cheers. that. Okay. Cheers. So I think we need to cheers to Steve. Oh, cheers, cheers to Steve. Steve. Cheers. Okay, that was a cool show, but yeah. how about those superstars coming to our plaza in the weeks and months ahead? We cannot wait. Cannot wait. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Stay cool.
But you know this feeling. Your brain is exhausted, but you still have 100 things left to do on your to-do list, and the only thing you can think about is taking a nap. <laughs> I feel that. Well, today we are beating back brain fog and fighting fatigue with the one and only nutritionist health expert. Jo I'm going to give another her another away. Joy you Bauer. Your friend. All roads lead through Stephanie Rule. I just realized you yeah. guys have been friends for a while. Joy too. Bauer and I hadn't met. I called her during COVID yeah. and I said, I Help need me. some health advice. I am home with my kids all day, eating, baking, eating, baking. And, and she did. And what a great Perfect. student she is. And she oh did what gosh, you suggested. Everything, and you everything. don't deprive, which is the key ever, piece of it. Ever. All right, let's talk about getting our energy back. We need our mojo. Yeah, and I think like having more energy is something everyone yeah, wants sure. more of. And believe it or not, having more energy during the day actually traces back to getting a good night's sleep. And okay. here's why. It is so important to get a solid night's sleep. And that is seven to nine hours a night. Because when you go to sleep, your body slows down your metabolism mm -hmm. and conserves energy. And mm -hmm. we know through research, when you conserve energy, that next day, our cells are more energy efficient. So they ignite more readily and you have more energy. So this is what we're gonna start with. So, you, so get some good sleep. The yeah, enemy. So, so the again, enemy. <laughs> well, but here, this is something really cool. You, you can roll in the sheets, but you cannot scroll in the sheets. And mm -hmm. here's why. Cute choice. <laughs> I'm not looking for either one, just FYI. <laughs> I'm a hard pass on both. Yeah. We like our sleep. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. When it's dark and you're laying down to get a good night's sleep, if you have your smartphone or your iPad mm -hmm. or a computer, the blue light that emanates off the screen is going to interfere with melatonin production. Yeah. Melatonin is a very important hormone that's released mm -hmm. in the brain that promotes sleepiness. So right. if you interfere with that production, Production, you're okay. not going to be able to fall asleep. So get rid, get rid of, of the all phone, of the, the screens. Yes. All right, let's yes. talk about foods. So the winning formula when it comes to food mm -hmm. is protein plus fiber plus healthy fat. And here's why. Okay. The three things together steady your blood sugars okay. and will leave you feeling sustained with your energy levels. Very, very important. So I'm showing some breakfast options here. Mm -hmm. Greek yogurt with some fresh fruit. I Why love Greek it. yogurt? Because Greek yogurt has more than twice the amount of protein as traditional yogurt. And by the way, traditional yogurt is still good because it has some protein, but Greek yogurt has loads of protein. So is the sweetness, it comes from the fruit, not from like honey or something else? Well, if you, you, can, you can get a plain Greek yogurt mm -hmm. and then be in control of how much sweet you put mm -hmm. in. I would say one teaspoon of maple syrup or honey is okay, okay, but if you can omit that and just really sweeten it up with juicy, fabulous, wholesome fruit, Cause, that's... Because the sugar makes you go high and low, exactly. too. Exactly. Okay. And so this is an apple or a banana with nut butter. Can we just look how at this swirl? How did you put this on? I, I didn't like do it. Anthony this. did it. Stop this. He's what? like a genius. Yeah. And so the apple provides juicy fiber and complex carbohydrates and loads of nutrition. And the nut butter, whether, whether it's peanut butter or cashew butter or almond butter or soy nut butter, whatever butters, we love all the butters. Yeah. It's got the healthy fat and the protein. Mm -hmm. And this is oatmeal for fiber and seeds and nuts. See, we have almonds here. Right. I love pumpkin seeds. So are those, what about chia seeds? Are those important? Chia seeds are great. Good. Okay. Chia seeds are great. Yeah. All right, take us to the beverage department. Okay. I'm going to just say this is great. I don't <laughs> even know what it is. I am so excited. Take a sip of this. What is it? I made a healthy, no sugar added frappuccino. Wait, it's coffee? Okay, that's delicious. Yes. So I added a shot of espresso, mm, mm. and then there's a frozen banana, I some can taste ice, the banana. It's yummy. cocoa powder for brain boosting what? compounds, and a little bit of milk. Almond milk is in this mm. one. So it's a dairy free version. It's light it in tastes, calories, and it gives you a jolt. It, it feels tastes, like a dessert. Isn't it yummy? Great? All right, it's great. what about just drinking water? Mm. And, and so water mm. hydration is very important, crazy important. If you're slightly dehydrated, yeah. you're going to feel fatigue. So everybody says, how much water do I need? The mm -hmm. first thing is it doesn't have to be plain water. It could be sparkling water. Coffee and tea count towards your hydration. Oh, they do? Yes, oh. as does okay. milk. Are so, you good about drinking water? Um, yes, I am. It's one of the Naturally things like that. or yeah. disciplined about uh, Well, I am disciplined, but I, tr I drink probably like six of those bottles a day. That's ones. amazing. Yeah. So you're, Ice, you're actually cold? surpassing. No. Really? Because you got to chug it, man. So you can't just when just it's down. when it's room temperature yeah. or you have a straw, you could suck it down yeah. more easily. Well, if you like it, it cold. Good. Ice water is like a ten in terms of taste. Room temperature is like a four. So you only like ice water? Correct. Do you drink a lot of it? No, I do not. See? And I need to. Okay. Yeah. You'll like this guy. So this what is, is this? a spa water. Here. I just added some lemon slices and cucumber and mm -hmm. some herbs. So it jazzes it up. It gives a little bit of pizzazz. So it's yeah. more flavorful. 
beautiful? You don't like it. And here's no, a I great do. rule of thumb. Like you take your weight, <laughs> divide it in half. So let's say you weigh 140 pounds. That's 70 ounces of water you should strive for every single day. Okay. And, and what... <laughs> Do you I'm like just, it? I'm, I do. do you like it? I, I'm, I know how, how little water I drink, so I'm trying and to get my reps in. These, by the way, guys, I made you a batch of my chocolate energy muffins. So these are light and they're fluffy and they're super delicious and moist, but I added in hmm. some espresso. So you get a shot, a little bit of a jolt, and oh, we're going to put this on Real the good. website. Great. Yeah. Joy, thank you. It's good to see you here. Uh, you can Always. get that, oh. that energy muffin recipe today.com slash food. Love you, Joy. Love you. We're going to reach charge for the weekend today. Nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to show us how to turn an easy sheet pan recipe into the ultimate reboot bowl. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, guys. Lindsay, it's so nice to be here with you. you the too. last time we were together, I think we were having a vegetarian feast oh, in Connecticut, yes. right? We were at the right. tavern. That's, That's right. Yes. That's right. That was And so you know what nice. I was thinking? I was listening to 70 years, your anniversary. I have actually been with the show. It's going on 16 years. Wow. Is that crazy? Right. 16 well, congratulations years. Congratulations to you. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to transform the easiest one sheet recipe into an energizing reboot bowl that has literally layers and layers of yummy goodness. But the best part, it is very, very simple to put together. So I'm going to start with the sheet, res the sheet pan recipe. Here I have three heaping cups of broccoli. So the, the, the big uh, theme here is going to be lots of plants. This is three heaping cups of uh, sweet potato that I cubed, or you can ap absolutely use any kind of acorn or winter squash as well. And now I have more cruciferous vegetables, so loads of fiber, and that is our cauliflorets. Now I have one can of rinsed and drained, and very important, it's padded dry chickpeas because I'm adding in a lot of fiber and some protein now. A little bit of olive oil. I have about two to three tablespoons in here because I want all the seasonings to stick. Now, I like to over season. So I'm going to put in, th uh, this is two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of onion powder. And I had some fresh rosemary in my fridge. So I chopped up and I have about two tablespoons here. But it's eater's choice. You can put in whatever herbs that you want. And you're just going to mix this up mm -hmm. to evenly distribute everything. You pour it onto your sheet pan. I missed it with a little bit of olive oil spray. And then I just put this. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I, I forgot about my salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. But it goes in the oven, set at 425 on the middle rack, just for about 30 to 35 minutes. And I flip it halfway through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you are going to get these gorgeous char marks. Look at this. Oh. This just came out of the oven. Do you, can oh, you see great. this? Let that me say. Nice. So when you're building the yeah. bowl, Joy, what layer goes first? Okay. So now for the fun part. And you are the boss of your bowl because there's so many different directions that you can customize this bowl. So here's my bowl. Mm -hmm. And the first layer is going to be dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So it could be spinach, kale. It could be any lettuce that you want. Ooh. The next is going to be a heaping mound of those delicious caramelized addictive veggies mm. that we roasted mm -hmm. then a little bit of fruit so i'm oh. using a pear because i don't think pear gets enough love guys and it actually has a little bit more fiber than apples oh, but you that. can also use an apple mm -hmm. you could also use pomegranate seeds or um even uh, dried cranberries oh. or cherries anything goes and then the protein is your choice so oh. i put out a question on instagram earlier this morning and I asked my followers, what should I put on? Lentils, salmon, black beans, shrimp. I have chicken. I have tofu. I'm going to tell you the so tofu came in last I place. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and go for the salmon this time. And last but not least, we so have the this Her mellow. Her the salmon to put in the leafy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we have a mellow but mouth-watering tahini dressing that I'm going to show you how to make because everybody Joy, needs we're this. We're not going to have time we're going to for put that. that on the website. We'll put it on the website. But okay, thank you, you so much. It. That looks fantastic. Look, All right. Look at this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a drizzle Beauty. because you got it. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. good. You got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? Sounds so good. I love it. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Joy Bauer is whipping up a quick and easy frittata that's packed with veggies and flavor. Take it away, Joy. Hey guys, spring is in the air and it gives me the opportunity to feature two seasonal standouts. First up, artichokes. Artichokes are packed with fiber and they're also considered a prebiotic, which means it increases the good bacteria within our gut to aid in digestion. Next, asparagus. Asparagus is an excellent source of vitamin K and folate. And while they're very low in calories, they are mighty potent in the nutrition department. So taking these two superstars, we are gonna make the ultimate spring frittata. When it comes to asparagus, you're just going to snap off the tough outer stem and then cut your asparagus into one to two inch pieces. For this recipe, I'm going to saute them in small pieces so we get them nice and soft. And now for the artichokes. So for this recipe, I'm going to use artichoke hearts and it's so simple. I drained and rinsed them from the can and now I'm patting them dry. You want to get them as dry as possible and I'll give it a rough chop. So now that the veggies are prepped, we are going to make the egg mixture. So here I have eight large whole eggs mixed with four egg whites. And here I have half a cup of a Greek yogurt or light sour cream. I'm putting in two to four tablespoons of dill and a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And you're just gonna mix this up just until the yolks and the whites blend together. And you can see I have little lumps of the Greek yogurt scattered throughout, and that's okay because all of that is going to blend and melt when we bake it off in the oven. Now we're gonna head over to the stove and saute our vegetables. I'm adding in my asparagus, and I'm also adding in some onion. So we saute these vegetables for about five to seven minutes. They'll start to soften up, the onions will get slightly browned. The great thing about frittatas, is they're totally customizable. It's really the ultimate kitchen sink meal. Now I'm gonna toss in a little bit of garlic, just stir it around for about 30 seconds, and I'm ready to introduce my artichoke hearts. The skillet is screaming spring and my kitchen smells amazing. I'm just gonna spread out the veggies and I'm gonna pour in our egg mixture. And last but not least, a little bit of cheese. I'm using Parmesan. Now I let it sit on the stove undisturbed just to let these outside edges slightly firm, just a few minutes. Then I transfer it right into the oven, set at 350 and bake it for about 20 minutes. And that's all there is to it. I like to add little puddles of pesto on top and then a drizzle of balsamic glaze. It is the perfect meal to put spring in your step. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? Our promise to take in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Is that enough? The circus-like stuff that the hearings turned into. This system seems broken. What do we do? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything That's you need. Right. What comes back together? Oh, I'm so, so happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here with two recipes that are good for us and good for the planet. Joy, good morning. Happy Earth Day. Hey, good morning. Joy. Happy Earth Day. And obviously, the theme is going to be all about plants. And I say that for two reasons. Plants, of course, shower our body with all of the right stuff, um, fiber and antioxidants, vitamins and minerals, but also because according to a study in the environmental journal Nature, the production of meat products generates the majority of food-related greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah. So everybody would be sort of reducing their carbon footprint and contributing personally if we just wiggle in more plant forward meals and I'm not saying exclusively eating vegetarian or vegan right. but the more plants that we could eat the better off the earth and the environment is going to be and that goes for beans for sure. too right beans are fabulous and you know what I'm making first I have taken on a beloved classic oh. I'm gonna be making what I'm calling the incredible vegan taco meat and i'm telling you i hmm. i think i nailed it my macho meat eaters in the house can't get enough of this okay. really? so the okay. cool part yes um that's a, that's a bold statement but, <laughs> but but i think i could back it up the best part is it's so simple so there's only three ingredients and i'm adding to a food processor three vegan powerhouses this is two and a half cups of cooked lentils lentils of course are packed with protein and fiber mm -hmm. now i have one this is just a can of rinsed and drained black beans okay. and i'm using black because i want it to be a dark color like mm. meat but certainly you could use any bean that you have in your pantry and this is one cup of toasted walnuts uh -huh. and then all all i'm going to do is pulse it and what i'm going to tell everybody is it's a couple of pulses because you don't want to puree it. You want to have a lot of great texture. So it's basically, whoops, pulse, 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 and we're done. Oh, That's okay. it. So now what I'm going to do is take you, I'm going to unplug this. I'm taking you over to the stove, and I'm going to show you how we cook it up just like ground meat. So come with me. Okay. Oh, wow. It looks. Wait, that's it? I, it looks like ground beef. This is it, and it's not even seasoned. Can you... You see how there's a lot of texture still in it? So there's the lentils, the walnuts, and the black beans. Joy? I love this. Joy, show us yep. this, this other one that's going to help us waste less fresh fruit as well. Okay, so very carefully, let me... Okay, this is just the taco uh, seasoning blend from the store, or you could do a do-it-yourself. I'll put that, you know, on social and on the website. And you just mix this up mm -hmm. and come right over here. And so very quickly, this is what it looks like. Oh, that We're looks back fun. over here. 
So that's right? just like a regular little taco bar you can set up. Yes, it's and it's hearty and substantial. I'm telling you, your meat eaters will love this. Okay. And you'll feel perfect. really good about the environment. So next we're doing something really cool. This is the first time I've ever tried this and we were so pleased with the result. You know how like you go to the grocery store, you buy all this fresh fruit, and then it sits in your fridge, yep. and yes. when you're in the mood for it, you have a little bit of mold yeah. on the raspberries, the raspberries or the blackberries. They're always moldy. Yes, yes. Oh, so yeah, this is a way to cut back on waste. So I had three. I take three cups of whatever fruit you have that's sort of seen its heyday mm -hmm. in the fridge. You're gonna chop it up and you put it in the blender with two tablespoons of honey. And so th my fruit's going in, and then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of honey right in there, and you whirl it up, and okay. you're gonna puree it so that it's totally smooth and velvety. I've also done this with chopped mango, okay. pineapple can work, any combination can work. Then you spread it out on parchment paper on your baking sheet, okay. and you pop it in the oven oh. at one, between 150 and 175, it has to be under 200. And you do that because you're going to dehydrate it. But here's the thing. You need a lot of time, six to eight hours in the oven. So it's a great rainy day activity mm -hmm. or if you're working from home. Now, look what it comes out like. See this? It's like a fruit leather. Oh, wow. And, but now we're going to take it to the next level now. So now we take our scissors just like this, yep. and we have the parchment paper. And I'm going to cut it. Oh, you let it cool. Yeah. You cut it like this. And guys, you roll it up and you basically it's have perfect. created, yes, rolled up fruit leather. And look at this. I have, the, it's chewy and yeah. it's sweet and addictive. It's That's really, great. really delicious oh, and such a fun it. activity. Look at that. That's, That's a good so idea, great. Joy. Oh, Thank Joy, you. I love, love this. Fun? Thank you so I'm much. I'm so glad. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer remixing boring lunch sandwiches with two tasty wraps. Oh, Joy. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm celebrating the weekend with two deliciously healthy wraps, a chicken Caesar wrap and a caprese Caesar wrap. So the common theme here is my lightened up creamy Caesar dressing with a surprising ingredient, and that would be an avocado. So I'm gonna pop all of this right into a blender. Next, some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and garlic, W sauce, some lemon juice, Dijon mustard for some tang, and then optional anchovy paste. And last but not least, six tablespoons of water. And we're gonna whirl this up in a blender. You can see how creamy this is. It tastes just like the real deal, but for a fraction of the calories. This is just 20 calories per tablespoon, so you can feel good about using a lot. Now for the build, starting with a chicken Caesar salad. I'm adding crunchy romaine lettuce together with some grated Parmesan cheese and some sliced cooked chicken with some of our homemade Caesar dressing. Just stir this all up and lay out a tortilla that fits your eating style. I have whole wheat tortilla, but it can be gluten-free, low carb, anything goes. Spread on some of our Caesar dressing right on the tortilla. It's got a nice green color from the avocado. I think that adds personality and fun and add in the yummy filling. Tuck in the sides, and then you roll it right up. It's so simple, it's so delicious, and every bite is packed with protein, fiber, and tons of flavor. Next up, a caprese Caesar wrap if you feel like going meat-free. This time I'm using a tomato-themed tortilla. I'm putting on some of my creamy Caesar, spreading it out, and simply layering irresistible calcium-packed mozzarella cheese, juicy vitamin C-filled and lycopene-filled tomatoes, and of course, some fragrant aromatic basil leaves. Tuck in the sides and roll this right up. How easy was that? This is so good. Whether you choose to make a chicken Caesar 
or compresse Caesar, that's a wrap. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Local meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Joy Bauer is here to show you how to make your sides stand out this time. All That's right. right. So here we go. And we're starting with cucumbers. Mm. Kind of shocking, but let mm -hmm. me say the cucumbers are comprised of more than 95% water. So that means they're great in terms of hydrating, mm -hmm. right? And every part of your body functions better and your energy goes up when you're well hydrated. But here's something really cool. Cucumbers are only 45 calories a cuke. Mm -hmm. They are naturally low in sodium and they're packed with potassium. So while they deliver good hydration, they also get rid of bloat. They get oh. rid of excess water in that, that you case, don't want. Just give me the whole <laughs> So then well, how are you shaking it up today? I'm going to shake it up by making buffalo cucumbers. Okay, does and it I matter what kind of cucumber you use? No, you can use any cucumber that you want. We were, so, we're showing a whole variety mm -hmm. over there. So here we have chopped tomato. Mm -hmm. We've got blue cheese and scallions. We're going to add our feature food, all the cukes. So that's the, where you scoop out? Yeah. Well, yeah, this is just um, peeled and mm -hmm. chopped cukes. And now, Al, put some of that sauce on. This is my buffalo dressing and give it a whirl. What's the sauce? And this, the sauce is um, oh, non-fat yeah. Greek yogurt, lots of seasonings, and of course, <laughs> hot <you> sauce. <laughs> and while you're doing that... Wait, I'm, what was it again? It's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Instagram the website. that out. It's on the Because yeah. I really want to try it's it on the website. I'm sending okay, you the link. Yes. And then just to bring it to the next level, mm -hmm. cut your cucumber lengthwise. Scoop Let's it. scoop out the middle. And then just put that in there in the yeah, middle. Yeah, and then put this right in the middle and look and how cute these are. Your sleeves. Okay. These right? are great. And you can make it as hot and fiery as you oh, want. Oh, good. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. My favorite, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. I'm glad you said that because they tend to be polarizing. Don't and I want to give Brussels sprouts some love. Mm -hmm. So Brussels are part of the cruciferous vegetable family, and they can reduce certain types of cancers, the risk for certain types of cancers. Also, here's a cool fact. One cup delivers more than 100% of your vitamin C for the day. Okay. So for people that don't love them, mm. I'm going to make a version of superfood mm. pigs in blankets. Okay. And I'm calling these Brussels in blankets. Okay. These are trimmed, mm -hmm. sliced in half, right. and you put a little bit of olive oil on them. Okay. And now you take your turkey bacon, nice and lean, mm -hmm. and you're going to wrap your blanket nice around. Enough. And you pop it right in the oven on 400 for about 25 minutes, Let and you go. get these delicious and babies. And kids eat and them too. Yeah, you know. Or I've real, seen a lot of picky eaters gobble those down. Real bacon around it, and you've got a hit. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, husband said the same thing. <laughs> and a mommy. Edamame is great. It's almost like a perfect food because it's a blend of plant-based protein, mm -hmm. fiber, and heart-healthy fats. So mm -hmm. it keeps your blood sugars steady mm -hmm. and it sustains your energy levels. And You're it also it has yes, it has minerals in it that can prevent muscle cramping too. So I love edamame steams, sure. right? In mm -hmm. the pot, out of the pot. But to take it to the next level, I'm making garlic sesame edamame. That's sesame oil, okay. some minced garlic. I put some red crushed pepper and salt. You mix that around. Mm, you put it joy. on your steamed edamame, mm. and this is, I think, restaurant really worthy. Good. Isn't mm. that great?
the heat. A new warning.